I think they came here to see the Council of Chords play tonight. No, Nobody no, comes no, to no. see the Council of Chords. <laughs> I want to thank everybody for coming tonight uh, for this informational meeting about uh, one of the biggest uh, issues that's come before the city uh, in my 10 years on the City Council and certainly maybe in my 58 years in the city. Uh, uh, I'm Ward 1 City Councilor Tim Cruz, for those of you who don't know me, and uh, I'm co-hosting this with the uh, Councilor Tom Monahan from Ward 2 and Council President Dennis Ian Erie from Ward 3. Pretty much the reason we're the co-hosts is we surround the fairgrounds, the three of us. We also have here tonight, though, uh, Ward 7 Councilor Shirley Azak, Councilor at Large Moses Rodriguez, Councilor at Large Bob Sullivan, who's sitting back there with his parents. What a good boy. And Ward 5 City Councilor Dennis DiNapoli. Um, we're here tonight, this is an informational meeting. Um, for us as uh, elected officials, the best part about this issue is we don't have to guess what's gonna happen. On May 12th, all of you that are registered voters in the city of Brockton get to make the decision whether you want this casino to come to the city or not. It's, uh, it, I, I thank the state for setting the law up that way. Uh, you know, obviously we've had another issue in this city that's been very divisive over the last 10, 12 years, and we still don't really know how the public thinks about that. We all think we do, but this will be strictly up to you, the, the residents of Brockton, to come out and vote on May 12th. And again, if you don't come out and vote on May 12th and you don't like the result, it's your own fault. So talk to your friends, your neighbors, and that's my lecture that I do every fall also. If you don't vote, don't complain because you, you had your chance to speak and you, and you didn't use it. So on May 12th, get out and vote. Um, so the Rush Gaming Group is gonna make a presentation tonight. This is not a political meeting. This is an informational meeting because there's a lot of information that nowadays is tough to get out. All you hear is rumors on the internet and everybody's on Facebook and some of us used to say, oh, wasn't the Enterprise an awful paper, but I'd kill to have it back where it was 20 years ago where we could get information out to the public uh, uh, when it was a much larger paper and a much, uh, much more complete paper. They work hard, but newspapers in general have changed. So um, do me a favor and turn your phones off um, so that when the people come up and make their presentations, you can hear them. Um, we, at the end of the night, will be question and answers. So watch the presentations. I think there's a brief video then there'll be a presentation on the host community agreement and then a presentation on the casino itself. At the end of the night, we will have a question and answer period. And questions and answers means question and answers. Again, it's not a political event tonight. The people get to vote on May 12th. So at this point, I think there's a video that's gonna be playing and then I'll be back up to introduce some people. Thank you. Brockton is a city that refuses to die. It's tough. It's like Tombstone, Arizona. It will not go away. The good people of Brockton are going to survive and they're going to win. If there were a casino in Brockton, it would put us on the map. Having a casino in, in the city of Brockton is going to help the whole city. It's going to help the residential taxpayers, commercial taxpayers. It's going to help the school system with an infusion of, of new revenue coming in. By bringing all that money, that $10 million, that's going to help us with the fire, fire, with the police, and definitely with the school. Brockton PD could hire more officers, they could have better equipment, they could buttress their gang unit and drug unit. What other projects would bring in as much as $10 million in, in revenue to the, uh, to the city on an annual basis? What other would provide that type of employment for, uh, for people in the city? The 1,500 jobs that the casino is gonna bring to the city, that's a huge plus for the city. I can't see another corporation or company or entity coming into the city of Brockton with these kind of jobs for us, at these kinds of salaries, with these kinds of benefits. If you have uh, 1,500 people who are working, they have to go to the grocery store, the gas station. They can't do anything but help the city. I mean, they, they live here, they're gonna spend their money here. We are the city of champions. There is no disputing that. 
you know, Rocky Marciano, Marvelous Marvin Hagler. And to this day, we still have the continuing pride in our city. There's no sports in our middle schools anymore because there's no way to pay for it. So if we don't have any athletics in the junior high, it hurts the whole program. You have to have middle school sports. If you're cutting middle school sports without money, that's just the start. What next, the music program? What if this revenue that's coming to the casino was going to the city schools to restore our program so that you're not always looking for the general public to pay for these sports programs throughout the school, not just the high school, but gearing the kids all the way up from the elementary level on. Let's restore the city of champions. We're very, very fortunate to have uh, Rush Street Gaming and Neil Bloom. For decades, he has been developing real estate projects, including Fennel Hall in, in Copley Place and shopping centers around the country. His companies have a wonderful culture of hiring people from the local communities first. One of the advantages we really had is that first and foremost, we have, we've been real estate developers, developing great real estate projects. So we know how to build a really first class project, do it on time and on budget, get it financed, and most importantly, make sure that it integrates into the community where we're building. We've had terrific relationships with the communities that we operate in. Displains is a story of recovery and revitalization. Over the last five years, uh, we've really been able to take a city that was nearly broke. Uh, we've been able to pay down significant debt, invest in our infrastructure, um, and give back to the residents, which was the promise of the casino from the beginning. It really means a lot that what we do in the community really makes a difference. Rivers Casino has supported us in a variety of different ways. In addition to financial investments, Rivers really makes a point to have their employees be involved in community work. What Rivers Casino does for us gives back to the Chicago community as a whole um, by getting folks back into the workforce. If people aren't working, they can't support their families. Rivers has been a tremendous asset to our region, culturally, socially, and economically. It's not like your typical job. It's uh, more like coming to work and having fun. It's never a dull moment, ever. It doesn't feel like work. I'm very proud to work at Rivers. It's a great job. Rivers is truly the crown jewel that really improved the look and feel of an entire corridor of our city. So we not only have a great opportunity for hotel, resort, casino to be developed, but we can have the assurance uh, that uh, a developer with the reputation of Neil Bloom uh, is going to make things that more positive. With that money, we will restore our pride. We will restore our confidence. And our kids as well will have the opportunity to, you know, to keep their heads up and say, you know what, I'm from Brockton, the city of uh, champion, the city of the great leaders. I think definitely with a casino in Brockton, Brockton will be a real city of a champion. If that happened, then it will be so wonderful. I think it's a dream come true to see that happen in the city of a Brockton. We will be very excited. We will be more, we will bring more light to Brockton. Get out there, talk to your friend, and explain to them the meaning of having a casino in Brockton, and I think they will go for it. And I will suggest them go out, talk to their friend, and go vote yes. Yes for Brockton. Yes for Brockton schools. Business. Jobs. Police. Sports. Haitian community. Community Cape Friens. African American community. Yes for Brockton's future. Yes for Brockton on May 12th. Best part of that was seeing Todd Petty's uh, market, home of the Sausage King. Uh, and now I want to bring up uh, Mayor Bill Carpenter. The mayor is going to talk, by the way, uh, you're a handsome guy, but not as handsome as the mayor of whatever t of Des Plaines. But. Um, the mayor is going to briefly talk about the, uh, the home, uh, home rule agreement, the home host community agreement, and then introduce the... Uh, the Bloom team uh, to uh, give the presentation on the casino itself. 
Mayor Bill Carpenter. You want the short one? Thank you, Tim. Good evening, everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd, I'd like to thank uh, Councilors Ianiri, Monahan, and Cruz for hosting this meeting this evening. I think that uh, the most important thing that needs to happen over the next 30 days is to make sure that the residents of the city have all their questions answered, have all the information available to them, so that as each, res it's, as each resident makes their decision uh, to cast their ballot on May 12th, they have an opportunity to make a fully informed decision. So I thank the councilors for hosting this. I also want to thank the folks from Rush Street Gaming. You'll meet Neil Bloom and his team in uh, just a minute or so, uh, but they have brought the whole team out from Chicago here this evening uh, to make a full and professional presentation to you of uh, what they are proposing to build here in the city of Brockton. And uh, I know it's easy, common to call it a proposal. I'm really viewing it as an opportunity. I believe it's an opportunity for the city of Brockton. Um, I'll be brief because we've got the people here from Chicago, but the council has asked me to say just a few words uh, regarding the host community agreement. So uh, originally back probably in early January, I believe, when uh, Mr. Carney asked me for a meeting to bring the Rush Street Gaming people in to talk about a proposal for a casino in the city of Brockton, um, I was very intrigued, uh, but also had a lot of questions. And uh, so I met with them for the first time. Uh, that led to some subsequent meetings. We did a lot of due diligence on our own. We were curious to know who was exactly this Neil Bloom guy in Rush Street Gaming, uh, but also in looking at what some other casino agreements looked like and what the potential benefits to the city would be. Uh, because we do have some challenges in this city. And I think one of our biggest challenges is to try to hold the line on property taxes and provide some real property tax relief for homeowners and business owners. I think we also have a challenge to change the perception of the city of Brockton from people from the outside the city and how they view Brockton. And I think that this uh, proposed casino is an opportunity for us uh, to make a, a great deal of headway in uh, both areas. In terms of the host community agreement, a lot of the host community agreement is actually um, the outline of it comes right out of the Massachusetts gaming law. So there is an existing state law that established uh, the three licenses, the gaming commission, et cetera, and there's quite a bit in the statute that outlines what a host community agreement should look like. Uh, but we had an opportunity to negotiate. We retained, uh, so you don't think that uh, I attempted to do this on my own, uh, we, had, we retained a top law firm called Mince Levin out of Boston. Uh, they're considered experts in this area. They represented Wynn Casino uh, in, uh, they represented Wynn in negotiating the host community agreement with Everett for the casino there. So they had some real recent in-depth experience with the gaming law and with host community agreements. Uh, so they negotiated, uh, along with our city law legal office, with myself involved, uh, w directly with the people from Rush Street Gaming, and that led to the host community agreement that was eventually agreed upon. Uh, in terms of the financial numbers in the host community agreement, the city receives 2.25 percent, two and a quarter percent of every dollar that goes through the door at the casino. Um, it's of the, the gross revenue, the gross sales, not profits, gross revenue, 2.25%. Uh, the, we negotiated a guarantee, and the guarantee was something I felt very strongly about, because in terms of the city doing its budget, in order for us to budget money for teachers, police officers, firefighters, uh, those essential services we need to provide for the residents of the city, uh, we can only budget what's guaranteed. So having a minimum guarantee was very important to us. And ultimately, the, the total guarantee is $10 million uh, of the total. The total package is a minimum guarantee of $10 million. If the sales, if 2.25% of the sales exceeds $10 million, our number continues to go up. 
So if the gross sales are 400 million, and the Gaming Commission projected that the Regency license would generate approximately $468 million in uh, annual sales. So at that number, so at 400 million, the 2.25% would equal 9 million, we would get the higher guarantee of 10. We're guaranteed a minimum of 10 million. However, at $500 million worth of sales, the 2.25% actually adds up to $11.25 million, the city would receive the higher amount. So the more successful the casino is, the city continues to participate, could potentially bring more money in. However, there is a $10 million guarantee. There's also additional revenue to the city over and above the 10 million, because in the host community agreement, we still collect our uh, hotel motel rooms tax on the 225 room hotel. We continue to receive that tax revenue over and above the 10 million. Uh, we will also be selling water and sewer to the casino. And the approximate estimated water sewer purchase is about 1.2 million. So with the rooms tax, the water and sewer, uh, and a couple other things in there, there's an, an estimated probably about an extra $2 million of revenue to the city over and above the $10 million guarantee. Um, I, I believe that, uh, that that is just transformative for the city of Brockton. It will strengthen our economy. It will strengthen the city. We'll be able to maintain essential services uh, without always having to give you a maximum tax increase every year. So the money is certainly very important. I think there's a couple other provisions of the host community agreement, though, that are really, really important. I just want to take a minute to go over. First of all, jobs. Brockton needs jobs. We have a lot of hardworking families here that are, that are either unemployed or underemployed. We have a lot of working people who are working in jobs below their ability and below where their income should be. The casino is estimated to create about 1,500 permanent jobs. And in the host community agreement, we negotiated a residency preference on all hiring. So that means for any job that the casino is going to fill, if there is a qualified applicant from the city of Brockton that lives in Brockton, they go to the front of the line for that job. And the vast majority of these jobs do not require previous experience or training. And I'm sure the, the Rush Street people will talk about that when they get into their presentation. But think about the vast majority of those jobs, 1,000 to 1,500 jobs, going to Brockton families and what a difference that will make to those families, to their current standard of living, to their quality of life, to their future. It, it will have a dramatic impact for many families, particularly families that have someone working for minimum wage or close to minimum wage. So the jobs are essential, and we thought one of the most important features of the host community agreement was the residency preference and hiring. Brockton residents go to the front of the line for every single job they fill. They can only hire people from outside the city when there's no qualified applicant from within the city. Secondly, and I think just as important, and it hasn't been talked about too much, is the local purchasing requirement. So not only if this casino was approved and built, not only would they be the biggest employer in the city and the biggest taxpayer in the city, uh, they would also be one of the biggest customers for businesses in the Brockton area. The casino, five or six restaurants, 225 room hotel, function facility, they're going to be purchasing a lot of goods and services. And also in the host community agreement is a provision that once again, they must look local first. Whenever they're buying goods and services, they have to try to purchase those goods or services in the city of Brockton. And if they can purchase those goods or services on a competitive, available basis, they have to buy Brockton. And if, it's not, if those goods and services are not immediately available within the city, then the towns surrounding Brockton uh, get a secondary preference. Then they have to look at our neighbors right around the city, and then only then could they go outside the area to purchase. So 
not only do we have the jobs and what that means to families, the $10 million a year coming into the city, but also potentially millions of dollars being pumped into our local economy, which helps our own local businesses grow, expand, thrive, and create more jobs for more Brockton residents in the private sector because of the increased business from the casino. So there's a lot of economic opportunity created by this agreement. Um, I know that uh, they'll be showing some plans, but I did also have concerns. I, I, I think the host community agreement, we've got a great deal, but another important aspect of the host community agreement is that there is language that protects the city from impacts on the city. And this is right out of the state gaming law. And specifically, there has to be an impact study done by an independent consultant on traffic, and there has to be an impact study done on public safety. And whatever the consultant determines the potential impacts on the city would be, whatever the mitigation, the remedy to offset those impacts is paid for by the casino developers. And I think that they are planning to talk about traffic tonight. Traffic was number one on um, my list when I met with the um, casino developers. But I feel very comfortable now that the, there's language in the state gaming law, there's language in the host community agreement that guarantees that a thorough traffic study is done and whatever infrastructure improvements are called for will be, not only will they be done, but they'll be done and paid for by the casino developers. And, you know, from a personal standpoint, we've already been looking at that Belmont Street area for traffic safety improvements. And I'm, I'm looking at this as an opportunity that instead of this looking for state funding that's a seven to 10 year process that we've just begun in the past year, uh, there's an opportunity to get improvements, millions of dollars worth of traffic safety improvements uh, in that part of the city completed much more quickly and without tax dollars being done by, by private dollars. So if you have, if you want to look at the agreement in more detail, it's been on the website ever since we agreed to it. So go on to the City of Brockton website. There's a complete copy of the entire agreement. Um, it's not exactly exciting reading. There's a more simplified version, the terms of the agreement, which is much shorter, much easier to read. It's like five pages. Um, and all that information is there. It's readily available. You can download and print it right off of the city website. And I know that they'll be answering some questions later this evening also. Uh, I'd like to bring up uh, Neil Bloom uh, for you to meet. Uh, Neil is the uh, CEO of Rush Street Gaming, the parent company that is partnering with Mr. Carney to develop the casino here, the proposed casino in the city of Brockton. Uh, when uh, I was first approached about the idea, uh, we immediately got on Google, started doing some research about Rush Street Gaming and Neil Bloom. Subsequent to that, I've had a chance to meet with him several times, speak, him, speak with him on the phone, uh, even more times, he's one of the most impressive men you'll ever meet. Uh, and the fact is that Rush Street Gaming is a top shelf real estate and casino development company uh, that has built half a dozen casinos around the country. It's very easy for us to go take a look at their operations, take a look at what they've built. Um, and I actually did uh, do some checking in Pittsburgh where one of their casinos is, where I, I, I know the mayor, and uh, he was serving on the city council a few years ago when the casino was built. He's the mayor now. They had nothing but positive things to say about Rush Street Gaming, how they were as a company to deal with, and most importantly to me, that they had kept all their commitments uh, in Pittsburgh. So uh, I, I want to give the Chicago folks a chance to get up. We've got 30 days, I will be available, and every, anyone will be available as much as necessary to make sure that all the information is out in the public regarding this proposal. It is the largest potential development in the history of the city. Um, in addition to the permanent jobs, uh, by the way, during the 18 to 24 month build out, about uh, 1,400 or so 
uh, union construction jobs during the build-out, which would also be very beneficial to the city. Uh, but in any event, uh, let me please introduce to you Mr. Neil Bloom. Thank you, Mayor, for those kind words. And thank you, uh, uh, members of the City Council and the President and uh, Mr. Cruz for uh, sponsoring this uh, event. Uh, we appreciate it because it'll give everybody a chance to learn more about our project. Uh, what I'd like, and most importantly, thank all of you citizens of the City of Brockton for coming here uh, this evening in a rainy night to uh, hear and learn more about the project than us. What I'd like to do is tell you a little bit about us, who we are, a little bit of our history, tell you a little bit about uh, um, uh, our other projects and why we uh, chose uh, Brockton uh, for this project. So first, let me tell you about who we are. Uh, I grew up in Chicago. I was born and raised there from modest means. I was raised by a a uh, single mo uh, parent, my mother. Um, I went to uh, the University of Illinois and Northwestern Law School on a scholarship. Uh, when I graduated law school, I went to work for a large law firm uh, and then decided uh, after I became a young partner that I really wanted to go into business. Uh, so uh, I decided to leave. Uh, when I left, to go into business with my roommate from college and start a company from scratch. We started with three employees. At that time, I had a wife and three kids and a $27,000 house and a $25,000 mortgage. And the difference minus my credit cards was my net worth. But this is a great country, so I was willing to take the risk and start a business. So my roommate uh, from college and I uh, started a small real estate company with three employees and over the years uh, we built the business up into one of the leading uh, real estate uh, investment and development firms uh, in the country. Uh, some of the projects that we've been involved in, uh, and there are obviously many, uh, some you're undoubtedly familiar with. Uh, one of our earliest projects after we had grown uh, was uh, we were approached to uh, provide most of the equity and be a 50-50 partner in Faneuil Hall when the Rouse Company was just getting started and needed capital. So we teamed up and were a 50-50 owner of that project, which we obviously were very proud of. Uh, in addition, uh, while Copley Place some years later was under construction or about to start, we provided equity for the development of Copley Place. We were a partner and owner and just about before the project was about to be finished, we ended up buying or merging with the developer, the Urban Investment Company, uh, and uh, went on to develop many more major shopping malls and mixed-use projects around the country. Uh, in Chicago, we built the Mercantile Exchange. Um, we built a major project uh, where the Ritz-Carlton Hotel is, which we still own, the first Ritz-Carlton in the United States outside of Boston. Uh, we've developed the Four Seasons Hotel and Bloomingdale Shopping Mall on Michigan Avenue where, where our office is. In Los Angeles, we developed the Century City, in Century City, most of Century City. And overall, we have been involved in the development uh, and ownership of uh, some $50 billion worth of real estate and some casinos. I would say one of the most important things I could say to you is that we are first and foremost a real estate uh, development and investor. And uh, we build very high quality projects and we're used to working uh, in different communities and build something that we're proud, proud of and something that fits well into the fabric of the uh, community. So how do we get involved in gaming? Well, about 15 years ago, uh, we were approached by a fellow that I met from Canada who said he wanted to, uh, he, uh, he wanted to uh, uh, compete to build a casino project for the government of Ontario in Niagara Falls, Canada. And uh, just at that time, a few weeks before that, a young fellow who went to school with my uh, son uh, had joined us, Greg Carlin, and he was very interested in, in the casino business. So he went to work on this project. 
uh, and uh, we ended up winning an RFP to build the project. But we had never done a casino before or operated one, so we brought in as our partners uh, the family that owned the Hyatt Hotels, who we knew in Chicago, who had operated a couple of casinos, and we ended up winning that project in an RFP similar to what's going on in, uh, in uh, Massachusetts. And uh, we developed a billion dollar project. Uh, it's the nicest, uh, most successful casino in all of Canada. And it's a very beautiful project with a hotel, a retail, and uh, a large casino. After that project, uh, Greg, who uh, runs our casino business along with David Patton, who you'll hear from shortly, uh, and I decided that we should develop regional casinos in the United States. So since the Great Recession, uh, we have been, I think it's fair to say, the leading regional casino developer in, in the United States. Our first project was one in uh, Philadelphia where we won the right to build a casino in the city. Uh, at that time, the government uh, awarded two licenses in the city, which was uh, required under the state law. Uh, but the Great Recession hit, and the other developers never could get it off the ground, so the st uh, state took the, their license away. But we built ours, and uh, we're fortunate to have uh, Wendy Hamilton and, uh, and, and other uh, group people here to, to uh, Lee Whitaker uh, from S Philadelphia to talk to you uh, later on this afternoon, I mean this evening. Um, so that's the only uh, casino currently operating in Philadelphia, and we're about to add a $165 million uh, uh, expansion, which is under construction right now. Now, during this time, the state of Pennsylvania awarded a set, another license for the only casino in uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, but unfortunately, the Great Recession hit. The developers ran out of money just as they were starting. The contractors were walking off the job, and we were approached to get involved and try to rescue that project, which we did. Uh, and the gaming board and the governor were thrilled that we did it because t times were really tough then. It was in 2008. But we came in, put up fresh capital, took over control of the project, and built it on time and on budget. And it is uh, uh, probably the nicest casino uh, in all of uh, uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, we also uh, were awarded the right to build a casino uh, in Cook County, where Chicago is located, the only casino in Cook County, called the Rivers Casino in Des Plaines. You saw the mayor uh, in the uh, video. Uh, we're very proud of that casino. It is the most successful casino by far in uh, the state of Illinois. We do twice as much business, same size as any other casino. There are 10 of them in the state. And that casino generates the highest win per position of any casino in North America. Uh, part of that is it's a great location. We have good management, but we are limited in size. But it is very, very successful, size by law, uh, which is the law of Illinois. We recently uh, won the right to build a casino in New York State in the capital region in Schenectady, near Albany and Troy and Saratoga, uh, and um, that was a very hotly contested uh, uh, process. Um, we were fortunate to win that, and we expect to start construction this, uh, this summer. Um, so I should tell you that we're very, very proud of all of our casinos. They're, they're all uh, uh, very successful, and they're all uh, very appropriate for the surrounding area. So, why, why, and why do we choose a Brockton for a casino uh, here in your state? Well, there, there are several reasons. First, we started looking around. We looked at some other places, and we were looking around Region C, which is where you all are located. And uh, we really liked the location. And we started looking for a site. And we came down and met George Carney, who had a great piece of property. And uh, George and I hit it off uh, very quickly. Uh, we decided that we wanted to do this on George's site. Uh, we shook hands, made a deal, 
and uh, have been working together ever since. Uh, we both like to work, so it's been a successful relationship. Uh, we think this, re uh, this uh, uh, site and location is really outstanding, and let me tell you why. Uh, number one, uh, we are, you know, uh, f very close to uh, the uh, uh, Route 2024. Uh, actually, the distance from getting off of that highway to the site is the same distance we have in, uh, in Des Plaines, where we've had great success. Uh, in addition, uh, we are uh, about 18 miles away from uh, Talton if there's ever going to be a Native American casino there. We don't know if there will be one, but whether there is or isn't, we will have a very successful project. And the fact that we are uh, 18 miles away we thought was a real plus, and we are 18 miles to the north, so we are closer uh, to Boston which is a critical factor. So if they have another casino, we have a much greater um, uh, 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 number of people in our area and uh, much more convenient from people in South Boston who don't want to go, in a, go, go to the north to uh, uh, come to our property and good highway access. Uh, and at the same time, we're 30 miles roughly away from the wind project in Everett. So we thought we had an ideal location. And I'll be f uh, very candid with you, we had all kinds of other options to do projects in uh, Region C, and uh, we, s we thought for sure this was the best location. Now I want to also cover one other uh, point, which I think is important. If there is another casino, a, a, a Native American casino in Taunton, all right, we will be successful whether there's a casino there or not. We have a better location. We'd prefer there isn't a casino, obviously. But if there is one, we will still do fine for the reasons that I mentioned earlier. We have a better location. We have all kinds of studies from experts that we will do more revenue than they will if we're both operating because of our location. And um, so uh, we will be very successful if there isn't one, and if there is one, we will do just fine. And there's no way we're spending $650 million and even thought that we would have to close our casino or not have a successful venture if uh, one opens uh, 18 miles away. Uh, so we are very, very enthusiastic about this project. Uh, we know it will be successful. And uh, uh, another reason that we wanted to do this frankly, was that we thought that, that this was the right project for, for your city. Because your city needs jobs, as you've heard. You need tax revenue, and this would be a terrific uh, vitalization and start for the city to grow even better and, and, and do just great. And I can tell all of you that there's no way that I would get involved in this project. I've been very fortunate. I've done well in my life. I don't need to do a project that I'm going to be embarrassed about or isn't going to do well within your city or something you won't be proud of. I urge uh, all the uh, elected officials here to call any of the mayors of the other towns or any of the, the police chiefs or, the, or any of the officials, and I'm sure they have done that, as you've heard, and find out whether they're happy, whether the, the citizens of that city or town are happy, uh, whether it's been successful in every respect, and it, it has, and we're all at Rush very proud of that. So at this point, I'd like to turn this over to David Patton, who will tell you a lot more about uh, the project and uh, our operations. He is our chief operating officer. David? Thank you, Neil. Thank you, uh, Councilman Cruz, Ian Erie, and Monahan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank everybody here, again, who's come out tonight. <clears throat> uh, we feel like the better informed you are, the better decision you're going to make. <clears throat> so I'm going to do three things uh, while I'm up here. The first is to give you more information about the properties that we operate so you can see 
that we're going to build a resort here that you're going to be proud of, because that's very important to us. Also, I'm going to introduce you to some people who work in Philadelphia uh, at the Sugar House Casino. Uh, Wendy Hamilton, our general manager, Lee Whitaker, our vice president of communications, and then someone also from, from the Fishtown neighborhood to talk to you about what it's like to be in a neighborhood, have a casino in the neighborhood, and then you can hear from someone who watched a casino be built in their neighborhood and what the result has been. And then lastly, I'm going to talk about the project, the resort destination that we'd like to build here in Brockton, take you through some of the details so you can see what this is actually going to be and some of the benefits it's going to bring to the city of Brockton. Now, I've been with Neil now for almost six years. Uh, time has flown by. I've been here since uh, just after we built the Rivers Casino in Pittsburgh. And I know we're all referred to as the, the Chicago group, uh, and I hope I don't offend Neil when I say this. I've actually spent a lot more time in Boston area. I uh, spent my formative young adult years in college and in law school in Cambridge. So I'm a Patriots fan, I'm a Red Sox fan, and I really couldn't care less about the Bears. But that being said, let's, let's, let, let's, let's, talk, about our, let's talk about our projects. Uh, we've won 14 Best of Casino Awards with our current casinos. Uh, we've won five consecutive in Pittsburgh. It's been named the best casino in the state of Pennsylvania. We've won a number of them up in Canada and also uh, in Illinois at Des Plaines. So when we say that we build good projects, these are projects that get voted best casinos and, and I imagine that when the time comes, we'll have something similarly to be proud of here in Brockton. But they're not just great casinos to look at and to be in and to, and to be a customer at, they're also great places to work. We've actually won 13 Best Place to Work Awards, and these are awards that are voted on by the people who are our team members, the people who work in the casinos. We try to create a great environment for them. We have good pay, great benefits, and chances for them to have careers, not just jobs, and to advance. We've had over 2,000 people be promoted since we've opened these casinos into jobs that they wanted to have that were better than the jobs that they first had. So I think that that's something we're also, will be bringing to Brockton. Our diversity record. We have a very diverse workforce that really reflects the communities that we're in. We do outreach to minority groups and the advocate groups for them to make sure that we can find the best candidates regardless of their race, and we've been very successful. And when it comes to our highest paid people, our executives, the people that are in the vice president rolling up, almost half of them are women, and nearly 40% 40, 40 of them our minority. And that's a reflection, I think, of the work that we do bringing people into the casinos to work um, at, at whatever position that they start. So we're very committed to diversity. Now, Neil talked about integrating our properties into the local communities, and we take that very seriously, not just in the way the casino uh, resorts look, but also with our team members. So our team members spend literally tens of thousands of hours out in the community volunteering their time. They volunteer uh, at homeless shelters, they volunteer to paint houses, they volunteer to build houses, uh, they work in soup kitchens. We, uh, we conducted the first farmer's market ever uh, in Des Plaines last summer. So that, again, is a very strong commitment that we have to all the local communities, and we want our team members to, because most of them actually live in the community anyway. The majority of our team members are local residents, just like they will be here in Brockton. And so we want them out in the community uh, giving back. Uh, Everybody here is very, very fortunate to be in the positions that, that we're in, and we want to give back to the communities that we, uh, that we do business in. Now, we also know that there are two things uh, true about, uh, about Brockton. That is, not enough people have jobs, and a lot of people, my guess is the vast majority of people who live in Brockton, don't have experience working in the casino industry. Okay. So, it's not bad. It's not bad, but I'm sure... People wish it were better. So it's important when you're trying to put people back to work that you have experience doing that. In Philadelphia, 35% of the people who we hired were unemployed at the time that they got their jobs at Sugar House. So for folks who need jobs and feel like, well, I'm unemployed, I don't know, you know can I really work at a casino? The answer is yes, you can. In Pittsburgh, 80% of the people had never worked in gaming before. So we provide the training that people need so they can learn the skills that they're going to need to do the jobs that exist at our casino resorts. And we're very committed to that. 
Now, we've talked about Casino Resort in Brockton being an engine for economic development. And I can tell you this, every place that we've built a casino, where we built a casino resort, every place has had concerns about what's it going to be like if a casino comes to our city, if a casino comes to our town. And those are natural concerns. I think anybody should have those questions, and one of the reasons we're here is, is to answer those. I'm very happy to say that now, several years into it, three and a half years in Chicago, four and a half, almost five years in Philadelphia, and nearly six in Pittsburgh, we've answered those questions with our neighbors, with the chiefs of police, with the mayors, with the city councils. They are very happy. They are great community partners with us, and they're proud and welcoming and very happy to have us. And I think now's a good time for me to introduce Wendy Hamilton, who's the general manager of the casino, uh, the Sugar House Casino in Philadelphia, Lee Whitaker, who's our vice president of communications, and Joe Rafter, who is from the neighborhood. They can give you the perspective of what it's been like to build, open, and operate a casino that is literally across the street from a residential neighborhood. When I first came uh, to Philadelphia before the casino opened, I walked around the neighborhood that was across the street from, where, from our site. And in almost every home, there was a sign that said, Casino. Okay? These were people who did not want a casino in their town, and they were very passionate about it. And I remember thinking, wow, this is going to be really interesting, because we were building the casino, and what's it going to be like when we actually open? Well, I think you'll get a good answer when you, uh, when you hear from Wendy Lee and from Joe. Hello, Brockton, from Philly. I have to tell you, I'm a little bit relieved um, that sometimes when something falls out of the sky here, it's just rain, because from the news reports we were seeing in Philly, all it does up here is snow. <laughs> so glad there's just rain out there tonight. Um, I've been in the casino business for uh, 20 years, 20 years last December, and I've worked for five big casino companies. And I have to tell you, when I, had the, when I was given the opportunity to come here tonight, and thank you for all coming out and allowing us to visit with you, um, I, I jumped at the opportunity because this is the last company I'm going to work for, if they'll have me. Um, I work for wonderful people. I, like I said, I've worked for a number of, of companies in the industry, and all of them were nice. I, can, I don't have anything bad to say about any of them, but this one is wonderful. I was born less than a mile from Sugar House Casino. I am a Philly girl, and I would not be the representative of Rush Street Gaming in Philadelphia if it wasn't something that I was genuinely proud of. I work for people who expect me to take care of our customers, take care of our employees, and take care of our neighborhoods. And we, we take, we, I, I, I never worry about what decision myself and my team are going to make um, on the spot, because I always know what the company expects of us. We take care of the folks around us. At Sugar House, we have 1,100 employees, um, and these are our neighbors. There are people who live um, you know, surrounding the casino. We, um, have, uh, we've been open four and a half years, and we have this really wonderful culture where even though 1,100 maybe sounds like a big number, um, we are very much a family. We all know each other. We all know each other's names because we hired people one by one, and we got to know each other, and we spent a lot of time um, looking for people who had just great energy and, and liked to smile, and we want to make our customers feel good, so we looked for people who were good at that. Um, and it makes it, you know, it makes it fun to be part of the employee base as well. Um, I never before in my career have I worked so closely uh, with, na with neighbors and with the city as I do now at Sugar House as part of Rush Street Gaming. Sugar House has been a sponsor of some of the most important events that happen um, in Philly. I don't know if any of you are familiar with our New Year's Day Mummers Parade, but back in Philly, it's a big deal, um, and Sugar House has been the title sponsor for all the years that we've been there. We also uh, put on the New Year's Eve fireworks in Philadelphia. Um, we do all of the hiring that we can locally, everything local first. If we have to go beyond um, you know, a couple of zip codes around us, eventually then we do, but we always look internally and, um, and in our neighborhood first. And our charitable contributions are significant and we also base them um, in our immediate neighborhoods. Like I said, I'm a Philly girl. And I like to see good things happen to Philadelphia's neighborhoods. And so when I look at what's going on right now in Fishtown and Northern Liberties, which are the, the two neighborhoods that we kind of sit on the, on the border of in Philadelphia, 
and everything that's going on there now, it's unbelievable. Everywhere you look, you see cranes. There's residential development happening for sale and for lease. There are restaurants going up. One of um, Philadelphia's biggest celebrity chefs is Steven Starr. He has a place in Fishtown, who knew? Like it was a part of the city that you never would have found that before. Um, but now we have a Live Nation concert venue opening across the street from us this fall. As Neil said, we have a $165 million expansion going on at our property um, because our customers asked for more, and so we're adding all kinds of amenities to make that an even better experience. Um, our neighborhood right now is one of the hottest development centers in Philadelphia. Everybody's talking about it, and we were first, and we are so proud of that. So we're partnering with all those new amenities that are coming into the neighborhood so that we make a very seamless entertainment experience for uh, our customers, and um, it's been really fun. These are very, very good people that I work for. There's not enough money on the planet to pay me to say that, I'm from Philly, and I'm only going to represent a company that makes me feel really good about what we're doing in Philadelphia, and I really do. So thank you for giving us a few minutes. Um, I'm going to introduce uh, Lee Whitaker, who's our VP of, um, of Communications in Philly, and a good friend. Good evening. So like Wendy, I also am a Philly girl. Um, and my story is interesting because I don't have a gaming background. Um, I've been at Sugar House now for almost eight years. So I'm the longest serving of all of you here, just so you know. Um, so I got started at Sugar House about three years before we opened. Um, I don't have a gaming background. I worked for the Philadelphia School District and for Philadelphia City Council before that. And, and I gotta be honest with you. I know Neil hates when I say this, but I gotta be honest. I was skeptical too. Um, when I first, not because I don't like casinos, not because I don't think they're fun, not because I don't think they're a great place to sort of go and hang out, but, you know, in my world, before Sugar House came to Philadelphia, the casino was in Atlantic City, so you went there, <laughs> and you put your $20 in the dollar wheel of fortune machine, and you tried your luck, and <laughs> then you came back home. It wasn't, casinos weren't something you drove past on your way to work, and so I was concerned about how a casino was going to impact, you know, my city how it was gonna impact my school district, how it was gonna impact my city council person, you know, our constituents. Um, and so I met Neil and Greg. And Neil and Greg, at the time that I joined the team, were out, you know, meeting folks and, and having meetings and, and, and going to our neighbors and answering questions that they had about what this development meant for their neighborhood. Is it gonna bring a lot of traffic? Is it gonna, are there gonna be a bunch of drunk kids, you know, urinating on my, on my doorstep, because that's what happened when there were clubs down on Delaware Avenue. And what I figured out was, you know, we took all the feedback, and Joe will tell you, we took all the feedback that we got from our neighbors and we worked it into the plan for how we were gonna operate in our community, because the reality was for Neil and Greg that we had to be a good corporate citizen and a good neighbor. And we have kept those promises. Um, and we'll continue to keep those promises. We've been open now for almost five years. Um, we still have an, a no door, I like to call it a no door policy. We, all, we always had an office in the uh, neighborhood even before the casino was built. You know, people can come upstairs and you know, talk to me all day about everything. Now I actually go to their houses, I'll be honest. There's a, there's a woman who's the head of the local civic association out there and when she has an issue with the casino, I go to her house and have dinner or she comes to my house and has drinks. <laughs> We've gotten, we've gotten to be really good friends over in Fishtown. Um, most of our employees are from Philadelphia, including the immediate neighborhood. Joe will tell you his whole family works there. Papa Rafter, we love him. <laughs> um, not only do we hire our employees from the neighborhood, but you know, we also volunteer. You know, we go out and we have holiday appreciation parties at the church in the church basement and we do an annual neighbors appreciation party at our place and we give away turkeys and we go to Maggie's house and wash Jim's car because Jim hurt his Jim Jim used to work for us and he hurt his back and so I volunteered to go wash his car I'm not very good at that so I took it to the car wash after that but you get the point um, <laughs> we support um, a lot of great organizations in the community um, you know, we have a lot of veteran support organizations, Coleman for the Cure, local food banks, you know, you name it, um, we do it. Everybody in Fishtown, everybody in Philadelphia really knows, has my cell phone number and address, and so they know how to reach me and they know how to ask um, me for, for money, which I try, try to give them when I can, you know, within the budget. Our procurement director um, meets monthly with a group of local businesses right in the Fishtown neighborhood. 
um, and to talk about you know what supplies and services we what opportunities we have coming up this month um, and we help them you know supply us help them you know work through sort of the procurement process work through the licensing issues that we have with the gaming board nothing you know major but you know those are the relationships that we have and that we continue to build um, in that community and it's something that we will continue to do we have always said from the beginning that there isn't a problem that we can't solve together as long as we're talking about it. And so, you know, Wendy's door is always open and my door is always open and Joe's always, well, his house is around the corner from us and I don't know if he wants me to send people to his house, but sometimes I do. But the point is, um, we wanna keep an open, uh, open dialogue and have a good relationship and we will continue to do that. I think it only works when we're sort of working together, um, you know, to achieve that goal. With that, I will turn it over to Joe, who has been like my brother, has become like my brother. He's my older, not as good looking brother, but brother nonetheless. Thank you, Lee. And actually, uh, Lee, I think I've been associated for about nine years, so that would top your eight years. Um, hello, and thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, you guys may recall a few election cycles ago, Joe the plumber. I'm uh, kind of known as Joe the bar owner. Um, just a regular guy, and these are some tough acts to follow. My name is Joe Rafter, and I have known this group from Rust Street Gaming for over nine years, as I said. Um, I try to be active in our community. And um, over the past nine years, I've acted as a conduit to the community, specifically Wendy and Lee, who you've just heard from, will ask questions such as, where should we buy our bread? Where should we buy our seafood? Where should we buy our flowers? Um, who do you use as a locksmith? And uh, my answer is always within the community. And that's essentially how they've explained it, but I've actually lived it. Um, as I said, I live a block away. Um, you know, hear many concerns and probably hear a lot of things repeated and you're tired and you want to go home. But I'll make this pretty uh, short and sweet. I do live a block away from the, the uh, casino and the traffic that may be a concern to you is not an issue. Um, well, I'll tell you why. Give me a second. Um, so we're Eagles fans, sorry, not Patriots fans. And the Eagles games or the Phillies games or in your case, Patriots games, will have a stop and a start time. The casino does not. This is a constant s stream of traffic, which in my opinion as a neighbor, actually makes the streets safer. Um, as Lee has mentioned, I've acted as a conduit for jobs also. Many people within uh, the zip codes, 19125, 19123, have first preference for their jobs. and. Um, I may sometimes get a little earful from the people at HR, but I, I could tell you that um, some 1,100 people, many of them fish downers and people from Northern Liberties and surrounding areas such as Port Richmond are grateful for those, uh, not only jobs, but family sustaining jobs. So, um, what else? Wendy also mentioned some of the ripple effects going on in development. Um, there was one individual who has acquired some 10 city blocks, and I am uh, very sure that that would not have happened had Sugar House not been the first person in for development. It's tangible, it's there, and now we are seeing, as Wendy mentioned, uh, a, a kind of renaissance in the neighborhood um, property values are up, and, and I will tell you that, our, our, in my opinion, the waterfront should have been developed probably when my great-grandfather was alive, and uh, it's not. And, you know, the community is very appreciative of what Rust Street Gaming slash Sugar House Casino has done for us, so um, I thank you for your time. Thank you, Joe. So let's talk about this project. Let's take a look at what it's gonna look like and let's go through some of the really important things and I'm sure uh, I'm gonna try to anticipate some of the questions that some of you may have. So here is the site plan. 
You can see Forest Avenue, you can see Belmont Street. Let me just take you through what's what on this, uh, on this slide. Uh, if you look to see on the right side of the slide, that's, that's where the main residential area is, you can see there's no casino there. What you see there is trees and green grass, and then just to the inside of that is the employee parking lot. Now the colored area where it's uh, blue and green and orange, that is where the property actually is going to sit. So you can see it's set back significantly from any of the streets, whether, res whether they're residential or commercial. Um, the hotel, the print's a little small, but you can see it's kind of that little arm that kind of curves off up to the north where it says hotel, uh, just off of Belmont Street. And then to the west of that is where the main customer parking is going to be. And again, you can see that is not where the residential areas are. You'll see off Memorial Drive where the exit from the high school is that as you exit, you see um, that little pond there. That's actually going to be a berm, so there'll be a nice green hill, lots of trees, and then the pond behind that as well. And then just to the right of that is the parking garage. So we have lots of security guards inside the casino. We have people patrolling outside the casino. We have hundreds and hundreds of cameras in the parking lot and in the casino to monitor everything that's going on. You're a lot safer in a casino than you are in a shopping mall, quite frankly. One of the dumbest places to try to commit a crime is in a casino, and people know that. And when you talk to the police chiefs in the towns that we operate, they'll tell you that crime is either certainly not higher, in many cases it's lower, and it's certainly not a problem uh, either on or inside the casinos that we operate. Traffic, that's probably gotta be the, one of the number one questions that people have, so let's talk about traffic for a minute. We uh, have commissioned a traffic study, and we are currently looking at about spending, of our own money, $8 million in traffic improvements to make sure that the traffic flows well all around the site, into and out of the casino. And think about it this way. It doesn't make any sense for us to bring traffic problems to the area because we've got customers that want to come to the casino. And if they can't get in and if they can't get out, then that's terrible for us. And so our interests are exactly aligned with you and with the city to make sure that traffic's not a problem. And we have spent whatever money has been necessary, every place that we've opened, to make sure that traffic is not an issue. And we'll do the same here in Brockton. You can see also on the site plan how much uh, everything is, is set back from the residential areas. And, and I've, I've been told that the, uh, the site is actually zoned such that if, if, if uh, if Mr. Carney, uh, if we don't, uh, for whatever reason, build the casino, um, he can sell it to a, to a commercial developer who could build a project that's only 20 feet um, from uh, the residences. That's how it's currently zoned. We've agreed for a minimum setback of more than four times that. And if you include all of the landscaping and the trees, et cetera, it's, it's well over 100 feet. So, so a, a very, very significant buffer between us and any residential area. And obviously, we will work hard to, to work with the city and interested parties to make sure that what we do build um, is very appropriate and integrated into the city. So let's take a look at some of the renderings. You may have seen these. I believe they came out in the paper last week. So one of the things you probably notice is when you saw pictures of our other, other casinos is they don't look alike. The casino in, in Niagara Falls, it's grand. There's a very tall, large hotel tower. Um, it's, a, it's a huge resort. Um, in Philadelphia, it's a, it's a very different, uh, more modest construction, the same as in Des Plaines. And obviously, since we're here in New England, we want to make sure that what we build is appropriate for New England. So what you see is more masonry, gabled roofs. Uh, the hotel itself uh, is only going to be, uh, I believe, seven stories. So uh, it's a very different than what uh, you might see from Steve Wynn and the kind of things uh, that he builds. But, but we're going to make sure that it is something that's appropriate, something that, again, you can be proud of because that's very important to us as well. So the actual program, I know you've heard some of these numbers, so I won't, I won't uh, take you through uh, repetitively, but it's a $650 million investment. And I think what's really important to understand is this resort destination is more than just gaming. We're gonna have a number of restaurants. We pride ourselves on, on having very high quality restaurants. In Des Plaines, a number of people decide they just wanna come and have lunch at the casino. They don't even necessarily want a game. They come and have lunch at our, at our Hugo's Steakhouse, which is a very popular restaurant. And one of the things we like to do, Hugo's, it's a, it's a Chicago institution. In the Philadelphia expansion, again, we're working with local uh, restaurateurs to uh, have their kinds of restaurants in the casino, and we'd love to do the same thing in Brockton as well. 
Uh, there'll be a hotel. It'll be a, an upscale, full-service hotel uh, with a pool, a spa, a health club. And we're also going to be building a very large entertainment, multi-purpose uh, meeting space uh, venue so we can have concerts, we can do entertainment, uh, we can have local groups or, or even groups from outside come and have their meetings there as well. Uh, we've talked about the employment. Uh, we've talked about the 1,500 permanent jobs. One thing I think it's important is for people to understand that these are really good paying jobs. Uh, when you take out the managers and the supervisors and all the executives and we just talk about the hourly, hourly team members, the median salary, that's the person right in the middle, uh, if you include benefits, is $50,000 a year. And as I mentioned before, we provide training for people so they can learn the skills uh, necessary to learn how to work in the casino. So for example, we have uh, put together dealer schools for people who want to learn how to deal table games. People who've had no experience at all, unemployed folks who have no experience in the casino come, we pay for the school, we train them, and then they can become dealers uh, with us. And it's been very successful uh, at all of our casinos. We've actually done that. Uh, the mayor talked about the hiring preference for uh, Brockton residents and also the 1,400 uh, construction jobs as well. Uh, that we're very excited to bring to Brockton. Now, in addition, uh, we're going to be holding a, uh, a workforce development forum on May 2nd. We, I really encourage anybody who's interested to come out. We'll have about 20 uh, representatives from our casinos at Rush Street Gaming who will be there to answer questions and to help uh, talk about the different kinds of jobs that are available. And that will be on uh, Saturday, May 2nd. So tell your friends and, and uh, if you have any interest, come, come and see what, uh, what they have to tell you about, about what those jobs look like. Um, as far as uh, business opportunities for local vendors, that's something very important too. We buy a lot of things at our, at our casino. We buy, obviously, food. We buy beverages. We uh, buy landscaping. We buy uh, snow removal, which I'm sure was a, a gangbuster business this last winter. We, we need to do a lot of laundry. You know, our team members have uniforms that get dirty. We need, we need laundry service. We need restaurant supplies. We do a lot of promotions. You know, we give away turkeys. We give away electronics. We give away gift cards. There are going to be opportunities for local businesses to do business uh, with us on almost a daily basis. Um, we also have a rewards card program that uh, we are going to be uh, doing partnerships with local uh, merchants as well, where people can actually, you know, earn points at the, at the resort casino and then redeem them at local businesses. So there are going to be a lot of opportunities uh, to do business um, with us here in Brockton. And I know the mayor did a very nice job of describing the financial benefits, uh, but uh, here, here you can see them recapped again. Uh, one thing I'm not sure we talked about yet was the $3 million uh, community enhancement fee uh, that gets paid in, in three installments, in addition to the, uh, the annual payments that you see uh, abo above, um, or sorry, right below. And then, of course, uh, the numerous impact studies. And again, the last thing I want to say about the impact studies, because we're going to do them uh, regarding traffic, well, we've already done some with traffic, uh, utilities, safety, schools, housing, is we want these done. Because, again, we want to be a great partner with you. We're in this for the long run. You know, Neil doesn't need the money. He doesn't need to do this development. He's doing it because he thinks it's a great project, and we're doing it because we want to we wanna be partners with you in Brockton. We want to build a great project. We're here, we come out, we visit, we talk, and we want to make sure it's something that you're proud of and that we're proud of too, because we're in this for the long run. And I think uh, with that, do we have Steve? Uh, do we have Steve here? Yeah? Yeah, come on up. <clears throat> so Brockton, this is why we think Brockton wins. I think we've been, we've been through all this, um, and I want to uh, introduce uh, Steve to the group. So if my name was uh, Mr. Bojangle, I would dance for you. If my name were Mr. Bojangle, I would dance for you. I'd put my hat on and I'd dance for you. But I don't need that, do I? And no one has sold you a bill of goods tonight. They have come here and they have been truly honest with you about a project that they want to bring to Brockton. They've been truly honest about projects that they have been developing throughout the United States. They've been truly honest about the developer, his reputation throughout the United States and how successful he has been, how well and how, how many people have benefited from his generosity, his foresight. We as Brocktonians, 
We, as Brocktonians, are proud Brocktonians. And one thing is very, very certain. That's, we're going to make certain that whoever speaks to us, offers us something, we're going to make sure that they're accountable. Okay, now, May 12th is the date at which you vote. I'm not encouraging you to vote one way or the other. I'm encouraging you to think things through. Ask your questions tonight. Turn your concerns into questions. See if you get the right answers for you to make the decision that's right for all of us. Mary Ann Williamson, an inspirational speaker, said that our greatest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our greatest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. What is she saying? She's saying that if you realize an opportunity, you need to take advantage of it. You first, of course, have to have a presentation made. Find out the facts and make the decision that's right for you. Vince Lombardi said winning isn't everything, but the desire to win is. The desire to win is. And you know, after May 12th, after you've made the decision which way to vote, the decision of having a casino here in Brockton isn't yet made. It's not finalized. It's determined by the Massachusetts Gaming Commission, who are looking at the other sites and comparing it to Brockton. You've heard the reasons why Rush Street Gaming believes that Brockton is the right place. So the question is, is it the right time? Is it the right place? And are these the right people? One thing I know for sure, you are the right people to make the concentrated and the proper decision. There's going to be a question and answer period, OK? I think your answers will be, uh, I think the attempt to answer the questions will satisfy you. Satisfy you so that you can make the determination on May 12th what Brockton is going to do. I believe that we can win. I believe that we can win. I believe that we can win. The question is, ladies and gentlemen, what does winning mean to you? You've heard an opportunity here that can define winning for Brockton. You make the decision on what's right for you. Go Brockton. Okay, you've heard uh, the presentation. We're going to line up, uh, actually, maybe on both aisles, and I'll bring the microphone back and forth. Oh, well, they're going to need that one to answer the questions. So, uh, before we start, there are a couple of other elected officials that came in since the start. Councilor Lad Shana Barnes is right over here. Uh, Representative Claire Cronin and Representative Mike Brady, I believe, are here. Uh, Brockton School Committee Minaji Jordan's here. Southeastern Regional School Committee Member Mark Lindy is here. And City Councilor Elijah J. Stewart. Oh, and State Rep Michelle Dubois is here. I didn't see her. There she is up back. So. You can ask your questions if you know who in particular you want to uh, ask them. Um, keep in mind it's questions and answers. And let's be respectful, Bishop. Thank you. Let's be respectful to, to everyone. So I'm a mom, and I am a teacher in Taunton. And um, so I've been hearing about the casino a lot, but I'm still undecided. I am a stone's throw from the fairground, Mr. Carney. My boys and I, we love riding our bikes there and running there. So it's your property is like literally like a part of the fabric of my children's lives. And um, I am really getting emotional because I see the picture and I see my kids bus stop right there. Like you have to, who, anyway, so my children's bus stop is right there. My home is in there with like, the, you know, where the back residential side. And, um, and I think it's wonderful, like Joe, Joe the, um, the bartender, I was bar waitress, seven years, it's a great gig. Um, 
But anyways, so I love to hear that, you know, they're, you're, you know, advocating for your neighborhood and stuff, and you need to come talk to us. The bus stop is Devon's Ave, okay, and Ash Street. We are the, like, our kids are there, and you're gonna, you're gonna impact the traffic. I want someone to come and talk to me, just like they talked to Joe the barber. There's no, a bar, excuse me, the bartender. There's no businesses around the residential. I live in a 1925 brick bungalow. You know, it, it seems like it's a different kind of neighborhood. Like, like I said, I'm still on the fence. I would, you know, the George School, we, we need a brand new field. We, we need drainage. We need, we need help with that. I can see some benefits, but I'm not selling my kids' souls down the river so I can get a new field if I'm afraid they're going to literally get, like, smushed coming off the bus. So, um, you know, I don't know who it is I need to get in contact with, but to come and see my neighborhood and, and meet my neighbors because we haven't met you guys yet. And I know it's such a short process. Right now, you know, we have a short time frame, but you, you need to come talk to us. So I just need to find out who, who needs to come, who I need to talk to. So I don't know. I, I don't necessarily, I just need to know what's the plan to talk to the moms. That's what I, like, when does that come to be? I, I know we vote on May 12th. And okay. So. Um, that's a great question, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak from the heart for a minute because I'm a mom as well, and you're speaking, you're speaking to me right here. I got you. Gaming is an activity that is for people 21 and older, period. On the outside of the building, it's a beautiful, beautifully landscaped building, and I, I, I can only tell you what I see on the outside of our building, and what I see on the outside of our building is a river walk that goes around the whole campus, along the river behind our campus, um, around our parking lot, that on a nice day, which we're finally starting to get now this year, is covered it with people biking, rollerblading, moms and strollers. There's nothing nefarious about the outside of our building. It's, it's like any, um, you know, big public place where people come to do anything recreational. The river walk has been very popular with the neighbors in our case. Your bigger question is who's coming to talk to the moms, and you're right, and I'm positive there's a plan for that, and David's maybe gonna answer that, but I will tell you that the slot machines and the table games and the restaurants, they're on the inside. The outside is very often a beautiful place to take a walk. <laughs> but the, the question is, David, who can talk to the neighbors and this is something the mayor and the councilors and I have to do with these people too. The traffic outside is probably the single biggest worry. Tell right. us about and the traffic studies and what we, we expect to do. Well, we, uh, uh, George, I don't know if you wanted to, to speak, uh, speak at all. Let me just take 30 seconds and I'll, I'll turn it over to George. All right. Uh, we, we, we have clearly heard since, since we've been involved with Brockton about that traffic is, is one of the main concerns. So, We've, you know, this, there's been the traffic study. There are, you know, plans for improvements. Pedestrian safety is something that we've heard a lot about and clearly is something that we need to address. And I can't tell you standing here right now, here is the exact day-by-day -day plan, but, but it's something we are absolutely 100% committed to making sure that anybody who wants to traverse, you know, around the area that they are safe that they can get in and out safely, that the roads are widened, that the signals are improved, that pedestrians are safe, that children are safe, that all of those things are absolutely handled like we've done everywhere else. Because again, it doesn't make sense for us if that's not the case, because we have to live with whatever we build too, and we're here regularly, and if we hear that things aren't working or that there are complaints, obviously that's something that we address. George? Well, I, I can help uh, answer some of the problems. Right, yeah, right up to your mouth, George. Right up. <coughs> all right, am I all right now? Can you hear me all right now? Yeah, usually yeah. people usually can. First of all is this, I understand what your position is because a lot of the kids play around the fairgrounds all the time. And I really appreciate it because as far as the thing is concerned, I, you know, I've watched most of them grow up and I had the Wilbur family lived in there before Tracy's family moved in there. It's been like a playground for a lot of people. And I've enjoyed it. People come in with their dogs, they walk around. The only thing I, I all the time, I try to keep after them and have the dogs leashed. 
for the safety of people that are walking there. People, it's safer to walk around the fairgrounds in this field park. As far as the thing is concerned, unfortunately, sooner or later, that's not going to happen the way it has in the past because the, the fair is going to be developed. And that's one of the things because of e economic times, the changes of agriculture, the, what the people choose to do now, as far as the thing is concerned. Every year it's a struggle with the weather like this year, this past year, Fourth of July was a great, usually a great business day. It rained all day and rained all night. Unfortunately, the fair is going to change and it's going to be developed. The only thing I can say this in front of everybody here tonight, that there's no deal that I can bring into Brockton that's going to produce this kind of money for the city of Brockton. The school department is desperately in need of revenue. The police department is underfunded, undermanned. Everybody knows that. I, nothing I'm speaking about that people are not aware of. The fire department is about a shot. They got engines that, in stations that aren't full. I feel this is a great opportunity to help the city of Brockton. I still live in Brockton. A lot of people in the business world say, geez, George County, you live in Brockton? I say, oh, yeah, Brockton's good for me. And I'm always justifying, unfortunately, things that happen in Brockton. It's not the mayor's fault. It's not the chief of police's fault. The things are just happening here. So just so everybody that wants to know, is by the neighborhood, I've always been available. First of all is this. People can find me because they know where I, don't know where I live. And uh, not uh, quite often, people come to my home if they some, have some issues. I'm not leaving. I'm going to be involved in this project. But the, the fair is going to be developed. There's no way I can bring anything into the fair. If I go down to Walmart or Best Buy or with those big box operations, that's not going to produce 1,500 $1, jobs. It's not going to produce $10 million a year better in revenue. It's not going to pay 10, 8 or $10 million to develop Belmont Street or make the corrections. These are things that I'm talking about. From my heart, I hate to. I'm 86 years old. If I told anybody told me 40 years ago I'd be selling the fair, I'd say you're foolish. But I have no other choice because it's something that the tradition can't carry on much longer, and I have to move, and this is a not great opportunity for the city of Brockton. I know there are people here that are opposed to it. I can't satisfy everybody. I'm only trying to satisfy the best, do the best thing for the city of Brockton, for the people that I've been stayed close to all these years. I never moved out of Brockton. I stayed here. I never moved to Easton. I never moved into Boston. I stayed in Brockton. So that's, that's, that, that's how I feel about it. I sat here tonight next to a man I never met in my life with a beard. He said a terrible bad thing about this man here, Steve Bernard. I tell you, you should be ashamed of yourself making a statement right, like that. Right. But anyway, all right. that's, uh, that's, uh, that, that bothered me because I, I feel uh, that you're okay. not supposed to yeah, be. But anyway, I'm just saying... Anyway, that's just so everybody knows where I'm coming from. That's what the problem, that's what the issue is. And thank you all for coming tonight, and I appreciate it. Okay. Dennis, you, Dennis, you want to take that microphone? You can give it to Dennis in the area right behind you. I can tell you that one of the things I'm going to propose, one of the things I'm going to propose, and I don't know if it's legal, so I don't want to promise the public yet, but I'm going to propose that the side streets, the non-numbered state routes, become re Brockton resident only. I don't want to promise that because I don't know if we can legally do it, but as part of the traffic flow, I am going to try to get that done. And again, I can't promise that, so. But if, if possible, we will. We'll do two over here and then two over there. I live four blocks from the fairgrounds, and anything that's been happening at the fairgrounds has always been a problem for the neighborhood with noise, with traffic, and with the uh, non-consideration of the residents. These are small uh, houses in quiet neighborhoods. We like it to stay that way. And besides the fact that this business is based on gambling and drinking, and Brockton has enough addiction problems, I'm not going to go there. I'm more con also concerned with these impacts of the traffic. Uh, 24 is a mess now with a normal commute. What are you going to do, widen 24? Belmont Street is two lanes on the other side of the fairground. The other streets around there are one lane. You know, it's just, I, I think you're dreaming if you think you can mitigate that problem. But I want to know, 
I want to know if those impact studies are going to be available to the public before the election, and that if the studies show that it's not solvable, if the pr project will be canceled. Uh, that's a good question. Will the studies be done before the... Uh, come on up, you can answer that. Just give your name for the public, because you weren't right here. Hello, my name's Scott Strusener. Thanks right into the mic, please. Hello, my name's Scott Strusener. Thanks for having us tonight. I appreciate it. Uh, with respect to the traffic study, um, within Massachusetts, uh, there's something called the MEPA process. Uh, and so it's a state level process. They look, they look at all impacts. And so parallel to what we're doing here in the city, we are filing what they call an ENF filing, which is essentially a preliminary filing that we'll be making at the end of this month. And part of that filing is a full traffic impact study. It's a public filing. Everyone can take, take, take a look at it, and I would encourage everyone to look up our, our ENF fi 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 filing, and I think you'll find out that we are um, proposing proper, proper improvements to make the traffic um, as good or better. Yeah, oh, yeah, so the, the filing at, at the end of this month. So, so the election's May 12th. It will be public once we file. Call. Yeah. So we have our traffic. In, 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 yeah, yeah. So we have our traffic in, in, in engineer here. Even though we don't file until the end of this month, we can probably make it public even before that. We have the traffic stu 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 studies. We've spent already a lot of money on this project. We would not have spent this much money if we didn't already know that the improvements that our traffic expert proposed weren't, weren't, weren't going to work. So I'm happy to have Bob so Michelle for a second come up and talk to you. But they don't. Yeah, I, I, the supermarket now, but, wait, wait. the schools or buses are coming in and out. Yeah. Right. At so, this point, the election will move forward. Then we would go to the state and say that we don't want them to well, give, the, give the license. No, no. But, but I think the, the, the point is we have our traffic impact site. So you've, when, you, when you ask the question, if the traffic impact, we, we are. We are we, finalizing it. We'll probably be done in, in a week. Okay? So the, we, we know all the results already. Okay? We're, yeah, so we're finalizing the document, we're finalizing the language, but the heart of the study is done. We know the technical data. I'm happy to have Bob Michaud, a traffic expert, who we know this was an important issue to you, come in. Um, a few things I just want to say about tra tra traffic. Um, first of all, you've already heard that you know, our interests are aligned. I know it's hard, I mean, maybe there's some ske 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 skepticism, but you know, customer, we're investing $650 million. Customer experience is critical to us, and traffic's a big component of that. And so we wouldn't want to choose this. We, we, had, we had, as Neil pointed out, we had choices all around Region C. We have been looking at Massachusetts for a long time. We have studied lots of communities, and we felt this was the best site, okay? So we are confident that we will be able to manage traffic very appropriately. Number two, just so the folks know, as George Kanye said, they are very committed now to selling this site. This site is currently zoned C2. Okay, that's commercial zoning, existing zoning in Brockton. We were just curious for ourselves. We had our civil engineers lay out the site. The site holds 386,000 square feet, feet of retail. Okay, if a shopping center gets built on that site, I just wanna point out two, two things. Number one, the traffic generation that comes from that shopping center is more than our project, number one. Number two, for example, the current setbacks for that project, as you might have heard earlier tonight, are 20 feet. We want to be responsible developers, okay? We voluntarily filed proposed zoning with the city without anyone asking us. Without anyone asking us, we said, you know what? 20 feet is much too close to residences to build our facility. We're going to put in a minimum of 80 feet. And on our site plan, when we're designing it right now, we're actually showing more, more, more than that. Um, and I think then finally, you know, what's interesting is probably, you know, the way you can find, get the most comfort level, I know your officials are doing their due diligence. I, I wish I could have all of you talk to the residences and the officials and the other communities in which we operate 
They are thrilled that we are there, thrilled. You heard the mayor of Des Plaines in our video tonight. He was not the mayor when we got the casino. So he had no stake in it. So it wasn't like he supported it and now has to stand up for it. He happens to be the mayor today, okay? All right, but he wasn't the mayor who initially supported the, 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 the casino. But he was very enthusiastic, okay, about all the good things that we have done in, 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 in Des Plaines. Not only have we managed the traffic issues, we've brought in so many benefits to that community. And so you heard him talk about that we're the crown jewel of that cor 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 corridor oh. now. So that was a okay. mayor of another community. Yeah. Yes. We, yeah. Right. The, my, so my the only question th is, when will the traffic study be available? Yeah. The traffic study will be available within the next couple of weeks, and we will make sure that it's very public, and maybe we'll even post it on the city's website. Mr. Mayor, we'll make sure it gets on the city website. We, we will post it on the city's website. Hey, why don't you... There you go. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Are these the casino people right here in this row? Yeah. Okay, we've heard a big sales pitch tonight. We didn't really get to hear both sides of the issue. We've only heard pros for the casino. Now, <clears throat> can you guys, any, any one of you, raise your hand and tell me something negative about the casino that I should be concerned about as a parent? Can you raise your hand and give me something negative? Any one of you, be honest. Tell me any concern that I might have as a parent. My um, sons will be attending Brockton High School in two years, which will be right next door to the casino. Is there any concerns at all that I should have as a parent? Anybody, raise your hand. Please, please. What should I be concerned about? Are, are you, let me ask you, are, do you have concerns about the casino yourself? Um, yes, my concerns are that I have heard not one negative comment from any of you, so I feel like I've been sold a bill of goods here, and I'm getting a hard push. I'm greeted at the door with water from yes, vote yes, people. Um, I don't see anybody up out here for vote no, so clearly you guys have the money to drum up a, a lot of support I don't know who's, who you've paid to speak or how many of our politicians you might have talked to previously or who you've gotten on your side. It's clear you've got the mayor on your side. It's clear you've got the units on your side. There's plenty of people, but I want to know what you're going to tell me right now. What's the negative that I should be concerned about as a parent? Okay. <laughs> I don't think we have the time, and I'm sure that our, our moderators will cut us off to get okay. into. I thought we're, we're going to try to be, we've been very respectful, and I would only ask that you give us the same respect. If you have concerns, if you have concerns about the casino, this is your chance to ask those questions. What we have tried to do is provide the facts for you about how our developments have performed and what we've done in the places that we operate. We prevented, we presented what those facts are for you. Have, have, you, have you been fined for underage gambling in Pittsburgh and Philadelphia casinos? Have you been fined for underage gambling in those casinos? We have, and I will tell you this. Every casino in the state of Pennsylvania has been fined for underage gambling. The state of Pennsylvania takes underage gambling very seriously. The state of Massachusetts takes underage gambling very seriously. Right. We take underage gambling very seriously. And I will tell you this, it'll be a thousand times harder for an underage patron to get into our casino than it would be for an underage patron to buy a lottery ticket or a pack of cigarettes. How were they able to do it in the first place? We have got millions of people who come through our doors. It's been two years since we've had an underage violation in Pittsburgh, and it's about a million to one right now as a shot for somebody what to get in. What change did you make? To, to stop the underage gambling. What we, change did you make? We do a lot of things. We train our security officers. Obviously, they have to swipe the IDs. If somebody has an ID that makes it through, uh, that they're able to fake an ID and they don't get caught, they can get onto the casino floor. But it is a very, very rare event. And we absolutely have a solid commitment. As I said, it's been almost two years since we've had a single person in Pittsburgh 
get through who's an underage gambler. So yes, as a father, I would absolutely be concerned about that. And I can tell you that we are very committed to preventing underage gambling. Nobody wins when somebody underage gambles. We certainly don't. Right. It's a, it, it becomes now, a very expensive proposition for the casino if they allow somebody underage onto the casino floor. That's right. And I've just learned tonight that you're going to impact our water supply greatly <clears throat> to the tune of, I don't know, the figure's gone now, but a couple million in water and soil rates charged to you guys. That means you're going to be using a lot of water from our reservoirs. Is that correct? Well, uh, my understanding is there's actually a surplus of water in the city of Brockton. Okay, and a, but and it was a, not too need. long ago. The residents can remember, we used to have water shortages here. Do you remember? Yeah. Okay. And that, yes, and you couldn't water your lawn. There was lots of restrictions. In California right now, they are running out of water. So this is a current problem. I, I think you're going to impact the city negatively. And we haven't heard any of the negative. Okay. We'll do another one over here, then we'll move back over there. I have a run-on question. If the casino is successful, are there any plans to expand further down Belmont Street all the way to um, the Marciano Stadium? We, yeah, we've got our casino site, and, and, and even the expansion we're doing in Philadelphia is on the current footprint. So any, any expansion we did would, would not be outside And the what happens footprint. if the casino is unsuccessful? What happens to the property, such as like what's happened in uh, Atlantic City? Well, we, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll let Neil answer that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I wouldn't be doing this if I thought there was any realistic chance that this would be a failure. Okay. We've done, we've hired the leading consultants in the country to do market studies, more than one, all right? Every casino we've done is highly successful. Our debt publicly trades at the lowest yields of any comparable casinos, all right? And we wouldn't be doing this if we didn't think it would be financially successful. So I would say that the odds of that are virtually nil that we would open this casino and it won't be successful or that would, it would close. And I've outlined to all of you the analysis involving the, the casino uh, further north, the uh, tribal casino, and all of our numbers say that we'll do okay, we'll do just fine if they open, we're a much better location. And let me say this. They will pay no state tax if we open, but the combined tax to the state that we would pay while we're operating when they're not will be higher than it would be if they were operating alone because we would pay 25% when they would only pay 17% and we will generate far more revenue than they will because we're in a better location because we are further north. And finally. How many buses do you expect to have at the casino day and night? Where is, where is, uh, buses. buses. I'm sorry, ma'am. I didn't hear your full question. Yeah. Do you expect to be oh, I don't coming know. in? That's a great question. We, we, we have some buses in Pittsburgh, and we have no buses in Philadelphia. We have no buses in Chicago. It really, it's going to completely depend. But the buses generally come between... 10 in the morning and, and 2 or 3 in the afternoon. They're not running uh, 24 hours okay. a day or anything even close to that. Okay. And obviously, we'll make sure that the, that the traffic uh, is not going to be impacted yeah. by the buses coming in. Coming yeah, the reason I ask is if you go out the front door and hit a good 9 hour, and you'll hit my house. <laughs> and I, I can answer better as far as the expansion. There is a zoning aspect to this that will only make the, the gambling legal on the property of the, of the fairgrounds, essentially, that, that we, we will have to pass a zoning overlay district, it's called, and we as the counselors, I don't think you'll see, see it expand beyond there. So let me get over to the side, and here you go. Hi, I, I will say this. My name is Lori, and my family has been in this town for well over a century. I grew up down the street from Mr. Carney's mother's house. 
I do frequent casinos. I have no problem with casinos. My concern is that Brockton is not like any other city that you have ever put your casinos in. The fact that we do have assistance programs for students that are of gambling age. I want you to tell me, coming from an educational family, what is it that causes you to say that it's okay to put a casino next to a school in an urban area where we have students. I personally don't mind a casino. I, don't ju I just don't think that this is the right place for the simple fact that you're actually abetting a situation that it, we have too many people in this town that are looking for the quick fix, that are looking for this simple. That's why we end up having, ha having the Kino and whatnot in our convenience stores that we did not have 10 years ago. And my, my father taught at the same junior high for 40 years that he went to. My grandfather's house is still up there that he bought in the 60s, and they moved over from the east side of town. My family has done everything that they can possibly do for this city and this state, and all I see, if you can give me answers, fine. If I cho choose that the answers balance out, I would not oppose it. But right now, my concerns that have kept me up at night are the fact that this city has so much to offer. Mr. Carney, your family has been in this city as long as mine has. And we know that our students and our, our kids, our families need more services. That property would do much better as a sports complex, educational complex. We just got $21.5 million for an educational upgrade, tying in the Mass, UMass system to Massasoit and Bridgewater State. At that, once that goes in, to have an educational complex providing, we have, we have actually a semi-pro ball team. No one knows where the Bucks play. We have the grandstand and the derby area. To put a football field there to actually have our, a single place where we can come and all come together as a community is important. These kids will then learn pride. I like the idea of the thoroughbreds. I, I remember the stories from the, the steeple chases and all of that, but you know what that ends up being? We can actually get some of our students that are interested in veterinarian, to be a veterinarian vet. Large animal vets, they can come over and actually work there. But that, that property has, a, and trust me, I'm not arguing with you because what you guys have accomplished is phenomenal in areas that serve it better. Even if you were gonna put it down on the south side where it is away from the residential, away from the school, is much better. I'm not, I am not coming here to slap you all in the face and say get out of my town. I'm saying that we have a man here with a property that his family has been here for over a century and his name has garnered so much pride in this city. I would like him to go out on top. We all want to go out on top. So why is the pro what's the problem with what we have being utilized for our students? There are plenty of properties, and the only reason we're here is because Raynham has shut them down three times. I, I do appreciate the fact that you're willing to keep it within our visual, so to speak, and you're not trying to over, my question is, why is it that that property is so important when we have the chance to actually do something for our kids? Our kids are practicing soccer over on the VA. Let me see if I can if I can answer your question. You've no, asked a, you, no, that's fine. I think you've asked a, a fair question, and let me try to be realistic in answering it. In life, there are pros and cons. Nothing is perfect. Somebody said, "Are there any cons?" Of course, there are cons. Okay, this this young lady has said, "Why can't we put a school there or a football stadium?" Okay, but economically, that probably is never going to work. The owner of the land has made it clear that. At some point, he's going to sell this property, if it isn't to us, to do a casino. He's going to sell it, and they're going to put in a giant shopping center. But you're okay? not from here, and I'm telling you, Brockton is its own entity. I brought up here, this is what's kept me coming back. I had perfectly good life outside of the state, and I keep coming back. My family is, but my grandfather at 97 was a graduate of Brockton High, and it would, it's killing him the fact that we have gone down so far. My friend's grandfather walked to foot joy every single day of his life, and that's what this city is built on. And please, uh, if you're going to put it here, I would beg you, 
that you don't just throw money at us, that you actually implement some programs that actually show that you're, you are with us, that you are now a resident of Brockton and you're going to take, take the opportunity to help our, our people, help our students. Because those kids, from being a teacher in Boston, those kids that are of the age, I guarantee you, will take those days, especially when they don't feel like going to school, or their friends have now had a birthday, and they will spend their time over there. Okay. All right. The, I think we know the, what you feel. The, Thank you. The, Thank last, you. the, last, and, the only thing I can say if, is they if cannot I can get answer. inside our casino. There will be... I'm sorry. Huh? Don't be sorry. I we want to do what's good for you. I've oh. But you, the children cannot get into this casino. All right. There's a, there's a huge. <laughs> I uh, we've given you the statistics. All right. We we have a million visitors and they had one and haven't had any in the last year. Will somebody sneak in with a phony ID? It is certainly possible. Does somebody sneak into a tavern with a phony ID and get a drink? I mean, we do everything we possibly can. We get fined if they get in there. And it's a very, very rare situation. And they can't get into the casino. And, they, and we're putting up a, a, a lake of trees, a burn, to isolate to the best we possibly can. But there are pros and cons. If you could do an education, that might be better, but that's not going to produce 1,500 jobs and produce $12 million a year in revenue that can be spent in the city. Is this on? Yes. Hello. Um, my name is Amanda Brown. I'm a mother of two. I'm a wife. and. Um, my main concerns is we live right near the fairgrounds as well. My husband and I, my two kids, I have one that's two and a half and one that's five. You guys don't care about the ages, but I do because I'm going to be here a while. I plan on staying. Um, I have big concerns. We're right down the street and, you know, you see the beautiful pictures and they're all in color and you have, I really respect the big gap that you want to give with the trees and the lake. But at my bus stop, I find needles. I have to call the cops because there are needles at the kid's bus stop. So when I see trees, I don't think, oh wow, they're so beautiful, I can't wait for them to see all these things at bloom. I think, who's behind that tree? Where are the needles? You, you, you're bringing more addictions into a town that already can't sustain what it has. You have, I mean, you say you're, you have, 2.25% in millions of dollars that's gonna come back into the town, but when you take in consideration the cops and the values of homes that decrease, nobody wants, I love the communal stuff that you're doing once you're here, but nobody says, oh, that's Brockton, there's a, there's a casino, I wanna live there. The value of homes goes down. My, my kids are going to walk by, there's going to be more needles, there's more addiction, there's, we can't handle what we have right now. You think like, you, you're going to send your kids, when they go to middle school, I'm going to have to send my daughter, walk past the casino. Casinos run 24 hours a day. We only just now started to be able to walk on the sidewalk. Put drunk drivers on there at any time of the day. I have to walk in a single file line because we can't walk on the sidewalk. And you're going to tell me at any time of the day there's going to be a drunk driver come. Stuff happens at casino and you guys have all your stats and you guys have everything that's on your papers about what's going to happen and how to prevent the people going inside. But what about when they leave and they're drunk? People go to casinos to have fun. You know, I'm young, obviously I know that. You go, you have fun, you drink, you go to the clubs, you go dance, and who doesn't want to live their life? But you're gonna have to drive by me and my kid as we walk in a single file line trying not to get hit. Tell me how to fix that. So do you have a question? My, yeah, my, my concerns as for our mother is what's gonna be in plan for me and my children so we don't get hit and so the crime stays low. How are we going to fix the crime? 
to any, maybe not Casino, where's Bill Carpenter? He filed for bankruptcy three times. Tell me his, where is he? Where is he though? Where, where's our student, where's the council? I'm not here to attack the casino. You guys do great things for the community. Where's our student count? Where's the council? Where's Bill Carpenter? He left. Okay. We had to sit through a marketing thing. We had to sit through a timeshare for an hour and 40 minutes, and we get 10 minutes to speak. We'll go over this side now. Quiet down, please. I hope uh, George Connie didn't get too fired up and had to leave because my question is for him. Oh, there you are, George. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm just wondering um, if the May 12th vote is unsuccessful and or the, um, um, the Gaming Commission says no to the uh, casino proposal, uh, what are your plans for the, uh, for the fairgrounds going forward other than horse racing and the Brockton Fair? Well, that's an easy question to answer. First of all is this. There's not going to be any more horse racing at the Brockton Fair, no matter what the vote is, unfortunately. Horse racing has seen its day. People are not interested in going any longer. The attendance has fallen off to, to there's about three tracks in America now that are surviving. Saratoga up in New York. Uh, in Kentucky, there's a couple. Other than that, the attendance is so low, everything is turned into be off-track betting. I know because I'm involved in the horse racing business and the simulcasting business. Unfortunately, horse racing in this area, from Suffolk Downs, is out of business for all practical purposes. There's no horse racing any longer in New Hampshire. There's no horse racing down in Rhode Island. And the tracks are closing one after the other because people are betting online, internet gambling. So. That's not an issue any longer, so that, that's an easy question to answer. The second question is what's going to happen? I, I don't intend to lose the election. I intend to win the election because when people are going to vote, <laughs> it's a very simple question. People usually vote their pocketbook. I've been involved in politics a long time. When people uh, struggling to pay their mortgage payments that they're down through no fault of the management of the city of Brockton. Just the cost of running the city is so great with the, with the, with the, the cost of having police, fire, school teachers. These are all necessities in running city government. I'm very much aware of the cost because I've been in so many different businesses. With the cost of all these, just, these are just three things. This doesn't include plowing your snow in the winter time, fixing the potholes that are going to be cost the city probably 10 million or better, through no fault of anybody in management. So as far as the thing is concerned, to keep in focus, the people are going to vote their pocketbook. There's no way that I can get anybody to come in the city of Brockton going to guarantee to spend $3 million for upfront expenses, another $10 million a year, plus probably more with the percentage, which I think will be greater than the $10 million by many times, as far as the thing is concerned, and 1,500 jobs. I'm glad there's so many people come in here tonight that don't need a job. I know we will have no problem filling 1,500 jobs or more, 2,500 jobs. These are all going to be jobs with, with health insurance, that the state and federal government's not picking up. These are jobs that people will have pride in working. I don't know of anybody that doesn't want a job. I have been around with a long, long time. I've been in 50 years. I've never seen one person that didn't want to be left the Drainham dog track have it pride. Because he had health insurance, he had a good paying job, and he could say he worked for the counties. As far as the thing is concerned, there may be a few naysayers here. Traffic is an issue. We'll take care of the issue. As far as the thing is concerned, the young lady talking about drunks, is, the casino isn't going to be a place where you're going to get drunk. That's, that's, as far as the thing is concerned, they don't have to, to a, come to a casino to get drunk. They can get drunk at home if they want to. <laughs> so as far as the thing is concerned, it'll be very well supervised. There'll be plenty of police there. There'll be plenty of firemen. There'll be first aid. There'll be doctors. Everything you want. As far as the thing is concerned, it's going to happen. Now, as far as the thing is concerned, the fair's going to be developed. 
whether it's developed as a casino or a shopping center. It's not going to be a football stadium or, or any of that type. It's going to go turn something that's going to turn tax money into the city of Brockton, but it will not be as strong as if we go with a casino. So my opinion is you've got a chance to vote. It's your decision to make, not mine. George County is not going to worry about whether it goes, I'm going to do everything I can to win this fight because I don't enjoy getting beaten. I haven't been beaten yet in 50 years, and I don't tend to get beaten now. Thank you. Uh, my concern is uh, to you. I'm sorry, his name was David. Okay. Uh, my question is, um, you said that there's no crime within the casino, and you'd be stupid to commit a crime within the casino, cameras and security guards and stuff like that. And I agree with you. I think that that is true. However, what about outside of the casino? I've been to Vegas and I've been to Atlantic City. And outside of the strip, we're good. Or on the strip, we're good. But you walk two blocks down on either way, and you see crime, and you see drugs, and you see prostitution, and you see other things. So your casino may be safe, but what happens outside the city? Thank you. That's a good question. That's very a good question. A very good question. And I think the best thing, the best way that I can answer that question is, I don't know, do we have the slide with the police, uh, with the quotes from the police? If not, a couple things. We've talked to, and I encourage anybody here who is, who is interested, and, and I, I know I, probably some of the elected officials have done that, is talk to the police chiefs in the towns that we do business and ask them not just about crime in the casino or around the casino, but has there been an impact in, on crime in the towns? And the answer they will uniformly give you is no, crime has not increased. In many cases, it's actually decreased overall, not just in the casino. The university, uh, was it Temple University? Temple University in Philadelphia, so not a study that we paid for, not a study that the industry paid for. This was Temple University, did a comprehensive study, now that gaming has been open in Pennsylvania now for about nine years, on crime, and found that there's been no measurable, appreciable increase in crime as a result of of the casinos that have, that have come to Pennsylvania. Sure. The towns that you have your casinos in, are they like Brockton? Have you looked at our crime rates, our gang problems, our issues that we have within our community? And do those match up with the towns that you have casinos in? Because it is easy to put a casino in a, in a town that has, say, 1% crime rate or whatever that is, versus putting it into a town where we had, I don't know how many murders last year. Right. So, great question. And, and, and every, every, it's not fair to say this city's David, like this city. David, just for those, those of you, I had, didn't have the microphone there. The question, the follow-up question is, have they looked at Brockton in comparison to the other cities they're in? Right. Thank you. Every city is unique. So I don't want to unfairly pigeonhole any town or any city to say, well, you're exactly like this. But Philadelphia is not a city with 1% crime. <laughs> Philadelphia is a city with gangs. It's a city with drugs. It's a city with murders. And I know that the area that we've been in was notorious for having derelicts in the, in the Penn Treaty Park just north of us. A lot of uh, empty lots where things that you know, were not legal and certainly nothing you'd ever want to see happen were happening, and those don't happen anymore. In the town of Des Plaines, it's a small suburban community about 20 to 30 miles from a major city. And I think Brockton fits that mold fairly well. Des Plaines is a mix. It's got some commercial. It's got a lot of residential. And you know, to Neil's point, there are pros and cons to everything. And there are people here, I understand, there are a number of people here, it doesn't matter what I say, it doesn't matter what Neil says, it doesn't matter what's on the board, it doesn't matter anything we've done, you're going to be opposed to a casino, and or you're going to be opposed to a casino in Brockton. And that's fine, I respect that. Everybody has their right to either be in favor or be against. And I don't expect that everybody's gonna come out and vote in favor. All we can do is give you the facts about how we do business, and for those who have an open mind, and those who are willing to consider both sides to let you make the decision based on a full view of who we are, what we do, and what we think this project will bring to Brockton. Richard's question. I, I'm kind of sad that the mayor's not here right now because if this is indeed a great thing for Brockton, the mayor of Brockton should be here until the end of this hearing. And that speaks a lot to me. But anyway, my question is this. How much money have you paid those people right there from Brockton 
to do this work. Second, na a mim da papia verdade, a mim da papia mentira. Não é bem, se até se até não cozinha a comer, aquele é problema de não querer me. It's okay. Um, because the issue I would like to bring is this. If a Brockton High School had 80% of white people, white students, this would never happen in Brockton. Yes, it's happening in Brockton by high school because the majority of our kids are black and brown. Yeah, ooh, okay, let's go to jail. Let, let's go to, to, to Playmont, let's go to West Bridgewater, to Bridgewater, let's go see why there. Yes, the question is, what are you going to do with the crimes we have already in Brock that is not being solved and bring this casino here? What are you going to do? That's my question. We cannot solve the issues we have already. Now you're trying to bring something to create more issues, like addiction, that we have already here. What are you going to do for that? What program are you going to bring to help us resolve those issues? Thank you. I do want to I do want to answer the question about about uh, problem gaming and, and, and addiction because Massachusetts actually is a bit it's it's unique in that it's got by far the most aggressive uh, problem gaming regulations and requirements of any state in every in every state in the country and particularly in in Illinois and Pennsylvania where we do business the states mandate that there be significant amounts of money that that, that come from the casinos for addiction treatment and addiction programs and also prevention of problem gambling. And we abide by all of those programs and we will do the same thing in Massachusetts. Massachusetts, I believe, uh, has talked about putting aside, I believe, like 15 million to $25 million a year for those programs. So that's, that's what we're going to do. We're gonna work with the state and, and, and contribute to those programs to make sure that there's treatment options for people. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Leonard Alkins and I've been a homeowner across the street from this school since 1974. I've seen this area change rapidly. I put up with the Brockton Fair with little complaint, with large amounts of traffic, and believe me, this casino will draw more traffic than you have seen in the city of Brockton in your life. The streets will not be widened to accommodate the number of vehicles that will be coming into this town. I don't care what kind of traffic study you have. It won't be able to accommodate the traffic that will come to a casino. Casinos, I'm not opposed to casinos or gambling, but location is the important piece here. You can't plop a casino right in the heart of a high school, the Arnon School, the Huntington School, Catholic churches all around the property, residential property all around where this casino is going to go, it's the bad choice. If you want a, a casino in Brockton, put it up on the south side where they have all those empty buildings in that shopping plaza off of 28. Hold on, I've been here a long time. My question is, how do you justify jobs that are gonna be approximately $50,000 a year without identifying what the jobs are and how much are they gonna pay? And is the health benefits included in that $50,000 salary or is it in separate from the $50,000 salary? And are most of those jobs, are they construction jobs, which you know are temporary? So when you put up 1,500 uh, jobs, uh, you have to be clear. And PowerPoint presentations are very misleading. When you talk about the money that you're spending in the city of Brockton, the money that Brockton's gonna receive, $10 million, that's a drop in the bucket for a casino to give the city $10 million. And that won't go to lowering our taxes. It will go to someplace else. 
The problem with Brockton is the management, the city planner. Did anybody go to find a manufacturing company to come onto that property uh, and offer Mr. Connie the kind of money that he's looking for? The question is about the jobs specifically. The 1,500, are those construction or are those? Absolutely not. The, we, the, there are 1,400 construction jobs associated with the project. Those are not permanent. 1,500 jobs are permanent jobs. The vast majority of those jobs are full-time jobs, not part-time jobs. And when we say the median salary of $50,000, this is how I know that's the number, because it's the same kinds of jobs that we have at every other casino. We know approximately how many table games are going to be, how many restaurants. So we know how many people in food and beverage we're going to be hiring. We know what we pay security guards. We know what we pay dealers. We know what we pay, uh, what the hotels pay for, uh, for the uh, guest room attendants, et cetera. Uh, it does include benefits, absolutely. Uh, but the wages are uh, from, I mean, there's, there's a reason why we've been voted one of the best places to work 13 times by the team members that work for us, and that's because we do provide great jobs with good benefits, and they're very happy uh, working at, at our, at our uh, resorts and our casinos. Thank you. What, what I'd like to uh, really find out again uh, with the traffic, what are, how many cars a day are you looking at that's going to be coming into the casino? Good question. I mean, you've got, you got one roadway basically that, that, that's uh, a viable to, to go into the casino, and that's Route 123. Everything else is a congested area now, and if you add, you know, a thousand cars or two thousand cars a day uh, on top of that, you're going to have more than gridlock. <laughs> so, um, Bob Michaud, um, the traffic consultant, um, and as Scott mentioned, we've done a, a traffic report, and that report is going to be subject to a lot of scrutiny, right? Um, the city's going to be looking at it, the city's hiring an independent reviewer to look at that and, and to corroborate what the report says. And I'll say this, that one of the first questions I was posed with by Neil and his team on Brockton was, is this a place that can support a casino from a traffic perspective? And before I answered that, I did my own research through MassDOT, the Massachusetts Department of Transportation, through the Regional Planning Authority, Old Colony Planning Council, and discovered that uh, both of those entities have done many studies along Belmont Street, and the state has actually targeted the Belmont Street quarter for millions of dollars of improvements, which they've begun to implement and will continue to over the next two summers. In excess of $6 million is being spent today on fixing Belmont Street. Um, we, we also know that there's another $4 million that's planned to be spent on Belmont Street by the state, and they're in the planning stages on that now. We also know that the Old Colony Planning Council has looked at the Forest Avenue quarter and has identified a lot of things that would need to be done so that it functions better and more safely than it does today. This applicant, this team, Neil, um, has committed to spend an additional $8 million of money to exactly address the concerns that we've heard here today from many people who have to live with traffic and safety uh, on Belmont Street, on Forest Avenue, right? So, so the impact of this project, clearly it's going to have an impact. And our job as traffic engineers is to figure out how to make sure that the roads operate as well or better than they do w without a casino, right? That's the job. We can say that based on our conversations with DOT, our ongoing conversations with the city, and the improvement package that we've reviewed tonight, that we will make traffic conditions better than they are today when you look at the aggregate of the millions of dollars that the, uh, DOT is spending now and will spend in the future and the $8 million that, that, that we're, we're committed to. Unless you take an awful lot of eminent domain you're not going to be able to widen uh, Belmont Street, Route 123 there, and you're not going to be able to widen Forest Avenue, nor Belmont Street from the fairgrounds to, to, the, 
uh, to Los Alamos Rural City. Agreed, and so that's where the state comes in. The state has already proposed to widen Belmont Street, and they're doing that yeah. without taking property, or in case certain cases they are. The state is taking certain properties to do that. Forest Avenue, we have the benefit of, of property that the Carneys own uh, that we're going to use for that purpose, to widen out Forest Avenue. So we don't, we don't, we, we can achieve this. How far are you going to widen Forest Avenue? 200 feet, you know? You're looking at a mile from, from uh, the fairgrounds down to Main Street. Right. The and there is not adequate sidewalks, as we found out, and everybody knows it's in education that I suspect that many of them here tonight are in education, yeah. and they should know the, the problems of Forest Avenue, West Street, and Belmont Street. You do not have enough of sidewalks available. You don't have enough of crosswalks. You can go from the stop and shop, and then your next traffic light is at the VA hospital. And that's why we've had a lot of pedestrians hit and kill there. All right. And that's why the state is spending so much money and why this applicant will do the same. Uh, okay. And, and those, w those issues will be addressed. The sidewalks will be addressed. Widening will be addressed. Improved traffic will be addressed. And just so you know, even without, if this doesn't go through, there are lights going in. The state's putting lights in in Linwood Ave, Linwood and, uh, and Lorraine. Anyways, and widening it there. But that's it. Something long past oh, absolutely. <laughs> but again, you, you know, they haven't resurfaced the road there. That's been, well, that's part of the project. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to even call them when they don't. Well, I've had a lot of my questions already answered or not really answered to my satisfaction. But one of the things that I'm really concerned about is the fact that we have this very short period of time, which is May 12th for this election. And I know we've heard a lot of the pro things here, and it'd be nice that we'd have an opportunity to, for those that are opposed to having a casino, regardless of what their reason is, so that as many people can be educated in it and have all the facts, because that's what we need. Now, I'm, I'm glad to hear that our traffic uh, study will be out by the end of the month. Uh, that's a good thing. Uh, I've been looking at some of the statistics using the Mass Department of Transportation, looking at that particular area. And uh, one part of the numbers they have for 2014 is just across from the shopping plazas there, where Shaw's and Stop and Shop, they talk about 30,000 vehicles a day already. The intersection of, on Route 24 that goes into 123, uh, they're listing that at 103,000 vehicles already. Uh, how many more is it going to take is it going to be when we get to that? But not only the traffic one, which apparently there's a lot of work being done on it, but what about releasing to and having the studies done for the uh, infrastructure? It was mentioned earlier about the water. I live at the far end, the far north end of Brockton, and I can tell you the water pressure there with our current system is horrible. It's awful. What's it going to be like when we have something so huge as this casino, the hotel, and all that there uh, on our current resources. Are there any infrastructure improvements that go along with that? The $10 million a year, again, it's been called a drop in the bucket. Uh, I'm expecting that that will be spent in that immediate area just with the policing. And I'm all in favor. We need more policemen in our city. We don't have enough. We need to find a way to get more so that they can do their job and so they can keep our neighborhood safe. I'm concerned with what's gonna happen outside. And you know, this is part of the study, my question really is, is are we gonna get these other studies available to us prior to the May 12th vote? Because it was said at the start tonight, we wanna to have everybody to have all the facts. And without those studies, without knowing what's gonna happen in our city, what the projections are, it's hard for us to, you know, there's no way we can vote yes, and we can't vote no if we don't know the real reason behind all this stuff. So it's important for us that. Uh, are these other studies going to be available? And I don't know who's going to answer that. <laughs>
What do you, what other studies do we have uh, prior to uh, the impact study? The two things that come to mind that will be available prior to May 12th are two things. Number one, our traffic study, which we've talked about, and that will be made available. Number two, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, um, there's a process called MEPA. It happens to be one of the more comprehensive impact analyses that any state in the country has. Um, you have a state level agency and process that looks at uh, impacts when a um, a project of a certain size gets developed in, anywhere in, in the Commonwealth. The first part of that process is called an ENF filing lane. It's essentially a certain preliminary, certain preliminary, can you not hear me? Can you hold that right up to your mouth? Hello, is that better? Okay, sorry about that. So the two things I was saying is, one is the traffic study will be made available prior to May 12th. The second is that the state has a state level impact analysis process, uh, which is not in all states, but the Commonwealth of Massachusetts does have it. And so uh, that process is called MEPA. Um, and the first filing of that is called your ENF filing. And it's a fairly comprehensive filing. We look at uh, impacts of all different sorts. Uh, that filing will be made, uh, I believe, prior to, to April 30th and the election's May 12th. So that filing will be made public. Uh, it will talk not only about traffic impacts, but all other, uh, many other sorts of impacts, and I would encourage anyone to, uh, take, to take a look at it. Will you make sure you get that to the mayor's office so we can put it on the city website? We'll so make that people don't have to go to the state we website for it? Yes, we so will make sure. So as soon as you file that, please get it on the city website. Yes. Um, I'm a high school student at Brockton High, um, 2017. <laughs> um, all right, well, as a high school student, um, well, I'm a sophomore, uh, 2017. <laughs> wow, I'm nervous, actually. Um, I have a first, my first question is, um, say it do, the vote does go through and it's yes. When, when is it going to be, uh, when is it going to be built and how fast will it, will, like, when will it be done is my first question. Like, when will it be done? A, a lot, the timing of that actually depends a lot on the state. Okay. So there are three applicants for the license in Region C. Uh, the state has not yet finalized uh, their deadline for all the applications to be in. Right now they've said that the earliest date that that would be is July 10th, and then they're going to take a number of weeks or months to review those applications and then award their license. Okay, but it, so I don't know. Say, say but, all of that stuff goes through. Right. When will the casino be done and when will it be like so that everybody can go and they can play their games? Got it. So <laughs> it's probably about a 16 to 18 month construction once once we break so, ground. Uh, OK. OK. okay so, so 10 months to design, 20 two months to build. Years, so like two, three years, something like that, right? Yes. So about two, three years. All right. Two to, three years, two to three years from the time that we are awarded the license. Okay, well, so as a high school student from Brockton High, um, I'm, uh, I'm in JRTC, uh, the Boxer Battalion, um, and we do lots of activities, as long as sports, other sports, and we have late practices, and we have to take buses, and not even get, let's not even get to that yet. In the morning, especially when it was snowing, do you, know, do you wanna know how long I would have to sit in traffic with me on my phone, my mom next to me, and she's yelling at me, you're late to school, you're late to school. I know, it's the traffic. We'll be sitting in one spot for at least a half an hour, or, or more, just on Forest Ave. Belmont is the, Belmont, I always tell my mom to go Belmont because it's faster, but it's not even that much faster. It's like 10 minutes faster. And then you have the buses coming in from, I, I don't know, 123, whatever. Um, all I know is that it's near, it's on Belmont Street, and it go leads out to the highway. We already have traffic going into those. We have buses that go. They need to go to competitions in other states and everything. And the fact that we have late practices, and sometimes, you know, we're responsible. Um, we can go, we can walk to, like, McDonald's or Burger King. And now or I go and I walk to my friend's house on Belmont Street, and now I have to worry about the fact that there's a casino right there. And it's, it's uncomfortable. Just You just look at it. It may be pretty, but... 
In all honesty, it's uncomfortable, especially for all of the high school students. And with the traffic, it's, gonna, it's going to be crazy. And I guess my question is, have you considered the fact that there are like about a thousand kids that walk home from school every single day on, that, on those two streets, both on Forest Ave and Belmont? That's my question. Have you taken that into consideration at all? Absolutely, we've taken, we take everything into consideration. And I, as, as I mentioned before, there are people who are not in favor of the casino, and I respect that. We just ask that people give open consideration to, to all the facts. By the way, you don't know, but we have the best army of any high school in the country, our ROTC. All right. Thanks, David. Yes, good evening. My name, I live on Pearl Street. I'm in Ward 1. I am not for the casino. I like gambling, but I don't want it in my backyard. When 24 has an accident, going and coming, let me tell you people something. You don't live here. 20, Pearl Street is 24. What were you all thinking? That's number one. What were you all thinking to want to put a casino next to high school students? And at schools, period. You were not thinking about our kids at all, because if you would, you would not put that there. That was wrong. It's not right. And second of all, all the, the trap, we do, we do need more policemen. There's no question about it. And you're doing this survey, you're doing this study about, about widen Belmont Street, you're doing, uh, making sure there's enough uh, security, enough security there. You're making sure we have enough policemen. I'm all for it. But you people weren't here eight months ago when we lost a child on, on, on uh, Belmont Street. And everybody knows about it, even till today. As far as I'm concerned, we haven't even found the person that killed that kid. So we need, we don't need a casino here to have more security and more security for Belmont Street. We need, we, need it, we need security here to protect the residents on Belmont Street, crossing and going back and forth. Putting the casino there, you're asking someone, you're putting our residents at danger. And Mr. Carney, I don't even know who you are and don't care, but I hope you do lose this one. And I will be there to make sure, because I do vote. Okay, I think we did two over here, so we'll move over here. I, I, do, I do just want to address the issue of the school, because we do have a school very close to our casino in Des Plaines. So I appreciate that you know that we don't live here, but we, we do, I do live in Chicago, and I do spend a lot of time in Des Plaines, and we do have a school that is very close to the casino in Des Plaines, and we don't have issues with students coming into the casino. We don't have drivers running over students. We don't have those issues. So I appreciate that everyone has got concerns, and they're natural, and, I, and they're completely understandable. But I would say, if you look at our record of the places that we operate, and what the people who live in those cities, the people who live in those cities like you, what they say about us, they say very positive things, they're thrilled that we're there, and we've had a very positive impact on all of those communities. Okay, a few more people, let's make them questions. I'm gonna make this very brief because I'm, I am hearing a lot of uh, wasted time up here, but so simply put, with, with all these regards to crime, casino generates revenue, revenue funds police. I, I don't know how much more clear the gentleman from Rush Street Gaming can make this. I mean, this is an incredible opportunity for the city of Brockton. Anybody who doesn't see that, and the only people who don't are the residents, the people in the immediate residence. And uh, I'm sorry, change is inevitable. Mr. Carney said this many times, that the area is gonna be developed. I mean, unfortunately, that's just how it is. And, and there's not gonna be an opportunity that comes along better than this, so thank you. Okay, that wasn't a question either. Got a question? I have a question for Mr. Bloom. I was told that a reporter once asked you, do you gamble in your own casinos? And you said no. Why don't you gamble in your own casinos? Is it because you know what the odds are? I have two answers to that. Number one, it's illegal to gamble in your own casino, so I could not. Number, <laughs> number two, the odds in a casino, whether it's ours or anyone in this 
I'm talking about a regular casino, are far superior in favor of the customer than the lottery that you have or many other uh, 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 sources of gambling. It's all, uh, obviously, uh, we expect to have a profit, but the odds are pretty well set and they're much better than you know, gambling in the lottery or going to a racetrack or what have you. But I can't gamble because it's not allowed at my own casino. Longtime resident of Brockton my whole life, just a concerned voter. And uh, I think what we've seen today is we're all going to need a lot of information to make the right decision, whether it's for it or against it. And if Brockton does vote May 12th that they do want a casino, I want to know the next step. Let's say it gets passed. It's going to go before the Gaming Commission, Stephen Crosby and the Gaming Commission. They see fit that it's denied. I want to know what Mr. Carney plans to do, as well as Rush Gaming afterwards. Well, Mr. Carney's already answered that a couple of times. Uh, Rush Gaming, I assume, I mean, you'll be gone. Uh, They'll be, they'll be gone. Uh, and Mr. Carney's answered that question. Is there litigation afterwards, though? Are we going to have a whole lengthy process? Or? I don't believe the Gaming Commission allows you to. If you uh, voted down or were not selected, we will not have a casino here. And I might add a couple of things. There will likely be another casino somewhere, and the benefits and the detriments that you've heard about will not be here. But the benefits are such that the tax revenue of the 10 plus million a year, the upfront money and all the jobs will be at some other uh, location, not to the benefit of the residents of Brockton. Uh, so th that, that is a relevant uh, factor. Let me also say just one other thing about gambling. Some people are opposed to gambling. Many people like to gamble. It's just another activity. I saw on the TV this morning that the average cost of a baseball ticket in the major leagues is roughly $100, okay? And they also estimate you'll spend maybe another $25 on beer and a hot dog. I heard this this morning on CNBC. The average person at our casinos loses anywhere from $80 to $100. So it's another means of entertainment. Somebody wants to go to a ball game. Somebody else wants to go to a ballet. Somebody wants to go to a theater. Somebody likes the action of going to a casino. If they don't do it here, they're going to do it somewhere else. So you will get the benefits. If it's here, you'll get the jobs and the tax revenue. No, we'll, we'll be gone. Uh, my question is on the presentation you had. Under the $10 million that is guaranteed, there was a little tiny footnote, and I don't know if everybody caught that, but the $10 million apparently is contingent on there not being an Indian casino. And what other contingencies yes, might sir. there be that that's, we don't know That's about? correct. The guarantee goes from $10 million I think it's six and a quarter, is it? To six and a quarter million as a minimum guarantee. You're still getting, you're still getting a, a two and a quarter percent of the revenue, but no less than six and a quarter every year. It's a, a 6.75 million, 6.75 million guarantee. Actually, the, the mayor raised it to 6.75. Uh, there, there's other benefits uh, that have not been mentioned here. The state takes some of the state win. A huge amount of money goes to the state. Uh, our estimate from this casino, roughly $100 million a year. And the state takes, uh, there's an $85 million fee that goes to the state to get for, by the winning license. The state takes 10% of that, that's eight, eight and a half million dollars, and they take six point something percent of the annual uh, 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 win. So that would be roughly another $8 million because they'll make about $100 million a year. So uh, that money goes into a pool and that pool goes to the host community. And so I th and 
surrounding communities. So there could be significant additional revenues paid to the city and the surrounding communities initially and then every year. And that's money the city applies for and has to be approved by the state, what it's going to be used for. I'm going to skip my two, two, because you got two left over there. And our fa favorite travel agent is over here, Arnold Greenblatt. And? And mayoral candidate. Uh, uh, on this uh, casino situation, should you be the one granted to do it and build it? And if you build it, they will come, right? But then they're going to have to come from the east side of Brockton and beyond that, the west side, the north side, south side. So coming from the east side, you've got Crescent Street. And if you were to widen that, a lot of eminent domain there. Coming from on Forest Avenue, eminent domain too. So the whole thing, the quality of life sort of changes for a lot of people. And with that quality of life gone, because in general, I've been here for 83 years now. No, correction, 82, heading to 83. And seeing the changes, like as an example, in your own thinking, they built the Campanelli Stadium. They thought they would come. They don't come anymore. So that's the whole thing. Is it a wrong decision to think of putting a, a casino here? I'm not against a casino. I'm against what's the, and the quality of situation happening to all the people around it. Thank you. Thank you, Arnold. We'll get these two over there, and I think there's one more over here. Oh, there's three left over here. I'm with the Labor Union Unite here. We're the uh, largest casino workers union in the country. And here in Brockton, we represent laundry and food service workers. Um, my question is, due to the fact that um, at all three of Rush Street Gaming's U.S. casinos, there are active uh, embroiled labor disputes, what is the plan uh, here in Brockton uh, to promote labor peace? And will you agree to allow workers a fair process to decide on unionization? Great question. So in the interest of full disclosure, the labor dispute that, that you're referencing is actually with Unite here. Uh, and we have, we believe, very good relationships with our team members. <clears throat> what we've said is we are pro team member choice. If a team members want to join a union, then they can join a union. And we encourage them to exercise their choice. We respect their right to choose. What we have said we will not do, what we will never do, is sign away their right to choose. So <laughs> Unite Here uh, has a process that they prefer where the casino uh, signs what's called a neutrality agreement, and then ultimately the union comes on the property. And that's a way that, that some uh, casinos have chosen to do business. We've chosen to respect our team members' right to choose. Uh, in New York, uh, we have signed uh, a labor peace agreement with a union there. And in Massachusetts, we really haven't decided what our approach is going to be. So to answer your question, I can't tell you what their approach is going to be. We may decide to do that, we may decide not to do that. So we have a, a mix across all of our different casinos as to how we've approached the situation and, and we'll have to see how things develop before we, um, before we make a final decision for, for Brockton. I'm David Fenton, I'm the business manager of Electricians Union Hall and the president of Brockton Building Trades. Maybe I can answer part of that is that Rush Street Gaming did sign a letter of intent to build a 100% union here in Brockton. Um, with that being said, everybody says union. What's that mean? That means that the workers on that site are going to have the prevailing wage of the area. They're going to have health insurance. They're going to have a training program. It's not going to be a job. It's going to be a career like they said they're going to do. And they committed to that when they came into town. We just signed the agreement this afternoon to, to move forward with the, with the process. But these will be local jobs. It's not like a developer coming in that's going to hire people from New Hampshire, uh, Vermont, or wherever. Uh, these people are going to hire local people, and it's going to be local jobs for here. Thank you. OK, and I know our last two are going to be questions. Um, yes. Uh, can you tell me what, really, uh, what is Jack Units's affiliation with the casino? project. He's a consultant, I believe. Yeah, I believe. Well, when he was mayor, 
uh, Brockton decided to build a desalinization plant that we're paying for. We went, at, we built Campanelli Stadium that we're paying for. My question, if we didn't build the desalinization plant, we didn't build Campanelli Stadium, would we need the money for a casino to pay for our taxes? Yeah, that's not a question for tonight. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about the casino and the vote. Hi, Dennis Hersey. Most of you know me, high school teacher, promoter, ballroom dance instructor. People, this is a no-brainer. By the way, I've been in your casino, both in Schenectady and in Philadelphia. I'm not a gambler. I'm serious, I don't gamble at all. I go for entertainment. This is about movie theaters. This is about concerts, live entertainment, dancing. This is just an unbelievable opportunity for this city. And I don't know how anybody can walk away from it. And thank you for Mr. Carney, because you're doing a great job. And for people who say if somebody's on the take here, yeah, there's nobody on the take. They've made a legitimate and honest presentation. And this is a great opportunity for the city of Brockton to be resurrected. Thank you. I guess we've lost the whole question thing, but I think there's two, two left. You'll be last, Chris. Thanks, Tim. Um, I just have a quick question. Um, well, first I'll just say, I am a parent. I have a little girl. I am not worried at all about a casino coming here because I have faith in my parenting and I have faith in my child. And honestly, I would be more concerned, and no offense to Mr. Carney, I love you, I'm more concerned with her walking by an abandoned state house building that is crumbling. It is unsafe. So my question is, what are the plans for the state house building on this property? I believe they're inside. I don't even think George. First of all, it's this: the state building. It took me about ten years to get that bought from the, from the state of Massachusetts. Every state agency had to pass on it. It would be poor, it could be sold, and it took an act of the legislature and a vote of the legislature to, to be able to buy it. First of all, it's just it bothers me that it looks the way it looks at the present time, because I'll be very honest, and I'm glad you asked that question. I've been trying for about 10 years to find a tenant that would move to Brockton, would enable us to spend a half a million dollars for plans and another three or four million dollars to fix it and build it out, put new this and put, put new that and make it a, would be a beautiful thing to look at. Unfortunately, with a tax rate in the city of Brockton, nobody wants, I cannot get a, a tenant to move in there because what I have to get for rent, unless it's a state agency, which they're more or less committed to being downtown at the present time, there's no chance I can find a tenant. If you, anybody here in the audience can find me a tenant, I'd be thrilled to death to start fixing it in the morning. That's not, <laughs> but when, it, when there's no sense of me spending a lot of money looking at an empty building, I got enough of those now. Thank you. But I believe, uh, David, that's inside the uh, area of where the hotel will be, correct? No. Oh, it's not. So it'll still be, uh, be there in? Uh, no, that's not included in the package at all. People okay. here tonight, I just want you to know, with the, with the visitor nurses out, they're going to stay. There's going to be, the people on Third Avenue are concerned, the, as far as I think it's concerned, there's nothing going to be built close to Third Avenue from all the way from, the, from Belmont Street to the Avon Street Gate, because that's owned by a different trust. There's going to be nothing there but green grass, and chances are some of the kids that have been playing football up there for many, many years will continue on doing so. But that and the state building are not included not part of it. in the okay. land that's been sold. Thanks for that information. Thank you, Council Cruz. Chris Cooney with the Metro South Chamber of Commerce. Just want to let you know that the Chamber's Board of Directors uh, unanimously supported this proposal uh, for a couple of reasons. Back five years ago, this state banned uh, gaming in this region. Uh, we were impacted negatively. We lost 600 jobs uh, to, to folks in this region. Uh, our board at that time took a stand and simply said, not didn't weigh in on the morality of, of gambling, but said if the state ever decides to return uh, to gaming in this state, 
that this region should be given preference. There is one license left right now. Fair is fair. This, this region has been negatively impacted. We have employees that can go right back to work uh, in this casino. And this region, this city, this proposal with these developers deserve to be considered by the state. And the only way we can do that is to vote yes on May 12th to move this project forward so that this property can be considered and this project can move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. It looks like both aisles are clear. Obviously, this is a very, very emotional subject to most people. All I can say to everyone is keep going online, go wherever you can, get all the information you can. It's up to, the, the, there was a show I watched when I was a kid, Star of the Day. It's up to you to decide who's going to be here. Get out on May 12th or don't complain. Thank you very much.